Talmud, Moss bites A C H A P T E R I Mishnah. If an egg is laid on a festival day, Beth Shem I say it may be eaten on the same day, but Beth Hillel maintained it may not be eaten until the day is over. Beth Shem I say the quantity of leaven is of the size of an olive, and leaven bread is of the size of a date, but Beth Hillel maintained both are of the size of an olive. He who slaughters game on poultry on a festival day, Beth Shem I say he may dig up earth with a shovel and cover the blood, but Beth Hillel maintained one may not slaughter unless he has loose earth prepared from the day before the festival. But they agree that if he has already slaughtered, he may dig up earth with a shovel and cover the blood because the ashes of the hearth are mukin considered as having been prepared tomorrow. What are we discussing? If one should say about a hand kept for food, what is the reason of Beth Hillel seeing that it is food which has been separated, and if about a hand kept? For laying eggs, what is the reason of Beth Shammai seeing that it is Muksa? But what objection is this? Perhaps Beth Shammai do not accept the prohibition of Muksa. We are of the opinion that even he who permits Muksa forbids Nolid. What then is the reason of Beth Shammai? Our Naman replied in table. We are debating about a hand kept for laying eggs. But he who accepts the prohibition of Muksa accepts the prohibition of Nolid, and he who rejects the prohibition of Muksa rejects the prohibition of Nolid. Beth Shammai is of the same opinion as our Simeon, and Beth Hillel is of the same opinion as our Judah. But did our Naman say thus? Surely we have learned Beth Shammai say one may remove on the Sabbath from the table with the hand bones and nutshells, but Beth Hillel maintain one lifts off the whole tabletop and shakes it. And our Naman said, as for us, we only hold that Beth Shammai follow the view of our Simeon. Our Naman can reply to you with reference to the Sabbath where. The Tana teaches anonymously according to the opinion of our Simeon as we have learned you may cut up cords for cattle and a carcass for dogs Bethilel is made to represent the opinion of our Simeon but Talmud, Moss bites a bee with reference to festivals where the Tana teaches anonymously according to the opinion of our Judah as we have learned you may not on a festival chop up firewood from rafters nor from a beam which was broken on a festival Bethilel is made to represent the opinion of our Judah now who taught our mission anonymously was it not Rabbi why then is it that with reference to the Sabbath he teaches the mission anonymously according to the opinion of our Simeon whereas with reference to festivals he teaches the mission anonymously according to our Judah I will answer with respect to the Sabbath which is stringent so that people will not come to treat it lightly he taught the mission anonymously according to our Simeon who is lenient with respect to a festival which is less stringent so that people might come to treat it lightly. He taught the mission anonymously according to our Judah who is strict. How have you explained it? The mission with respect to a hand kept for laying eggs. The prohibition is on account of Muksa. If so, then instead of disputing about an egg, let the mission state that they dispute about the hand itself. It is in order to inform you of the extent of the opinion of Beth Shammai that even Nolat is permitted, then let them dispute about the hand itself to show you the extent of the opinion of Beth Hillel that they forbid even Muksa. And if you reply that information with respect to the extent of the opinion of permitting is to be preferred, then let them dispute about it. Both thus a hand and its egg laid on a festival may be eaten, but Beth Hillel maintained they may not be eaten. Therefore, said Rabbi, in reality, the mission refers to a hand kept for food, but we are discussing a festival which fell on a Sunday and the prohibition is on account of preparation on a Sabbath for Rabbah is of the opinion that every egg laid now was completely formed the day before and Rabbah is consistent with his view for Rabbah said what is the teaching of that which is written and it shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in it is that a week they may prepare for Sabbath and a week they may prepare for a festival but a festival may not prepare for Sabbath and Sabbath may not prepare for a festival said Abay to him Rabbah but if it is so let the egg laid on a festival in general be permitted it is a preventive measure out of consideration for a festival falling on a Sunday let the egg laid on a Sabbath in general be permitted it is a preventive measure out of consideration for a Sabbath immediately following a festival but do we enact a preventive measure in such a case surely it was taught if one slaughters a hen and finds therein eggs Completely formed, they may be eaten on the festival. Now, if this be so, let them be prohibited on account of those eggs laid on the same day. He answered him, The case of their being in a hen eggs completely formed is a rare occurrence, and the rabbis do not decree a prohibition with regard to a rare occurrence. Our Joseph said it is a preventive measure on account of the eating of fruit fallen from a tree. Said Abbe to him, What is the reason that fruit fallen from a tree on a festival is forbidden? Talmud, Moss bites, it is a preventive measure lest one climbs a tree and plucks its fruit, but this is itself only a preventive measure. Should we then come and enact one preventive measure to safeguard another preventive measure? Both are one preventive measure. Our Isaac said it is a preventive measure on account of the consuming of juices exuding from fruit. Said Abbe to him, What is the reason that juice exuding from fruit on a festival is forbidden? It is a preventive. Measure less one purposely squeezes out the juice thus this is itself only a preventive measure should we then come and enact one preventive measure against the breach of another preventive measure both are one preventive measure all the other rabbis do not explain as our naman does in accordance with our objection likewise they do not explain as rabble because they do not accept his rule of hakanah but why does not our joseph explain as does our isaac he will answer you an egg is food and fruit is food excluding juice which is not food but a beverage and why does not our isaac explain as does our joseph he will answer you an egg is enclosed in the hand and juice is enclosed in the fruit excluding fruit which is exposed all the time our yohanan also is of the opinion that it is a preventive measure on account of the consuming of juices exuding from fruit for our yohanan pointed out a contradiction between one statement of our judah and another statement and also Reconciled it, we have learned you may not squeeze fruit to bring out juice, and even if the juice exuded of itself, it is still forbidden. Our Judah says if the fruit was intended as an eatable, what exudes is permitted, but if it was kept for its juice, then what exudes is forbidden. So we see that according to our Judah, what exudes from anything kept as eatables is regarded as food separated. But contrast this with the following: our Judah further said one may stipulate on the first day of the New Year festival with respect to a basket of fruit and eat it on the second day. Similarly, an egg laid on the first day may be eaten on the second only on the second, but not on the first. And our Yohanan answered the statement must be reversed. Now, since here Yohanan contrasts them with each other, infer from this that there is one and the same reason. Talmud, Moss bites of Rabbanah says in reality you need not reverse the authorities for our Judah was speaking from the point of view of it. Rabbis, thus according to my view, the egg is permitted even on the first day because it is food separated from the hand. But according to your opinion, you should at least agree with me that it is permitted on the second day, for there are two distinct days of holiness. And the rabbis answered him, No, the two days are one continuous day of holiness. Rabbin, the son of Rolla says, We are dealing here with a hand kept for laying eggs, and our Judah is consistent with his view, for he holds it. Interdict of Muksa, an objection was raised. Both an egg laid on a Sabbath and an egg laid on a festival may not be moved to cover there with a vessel nor to support there with the leg of a bed, but a vessel may be placed over it so that it should not be broken. And if in doubt it is forbidden, and if it got mixed up with even a thousand eggs, they are all forbidden. This is well according to Rabbi who says that it is on account of preparation, and it is a doubt with respect to a biblical. Prohibition and every doubt with respect to a biblical prohibition must be decided with stringency. But according to our Joseph and our Isaac, who say that it is a preventive measure, then it is a doubt with respect to a rabbinical enactment. And every doubt with respect to a rabbinical enactment is resolved with leniency. The last clause of the text deals with the doubt of trefah. If so, consider the latter clause. And if it got mixed up with a thousand eggs, they are all forbidden. Now, if you say that the doubt is whether the egg was laid on a festival or on a weekday, it is well because the egg is an object which can become otherwise permitted, and any object which can become otherwise permitted is not neutralized even in a thousand times its quantity. But if you say that it is a doubt of trefah, then the egg is an object which cannot become otherwise permitted and should therefore be neutralized by a greater number than itself. And if you answer an egg is valuable and is not neutralized by a greater number this would be correct according to him who says that we learned whatsoever one is want to count but according to him who says that we
Bai Tai said we regard the upper layers as if they are dispersed among each barrel and the lower neutralize the upper litter of fix while our Joshua says if there were there a hundred tops of barrels they neutralize but if not then all the top layers are forbidden and all the remainders are permitted but Arjuna maintains that our Elizer said if there are a hundred upper layers they neutralize but if not then all the top layers are forbidden and all the remainders are permitted while our Joshua says even if there are three hundred tops of barrels they do not neutralize if it was pressed in a jar and he does not know in which jar he pressed it all agree that they neutralize you say all agree why this is the point they are disputing said our Papa this is what he says if it was pressed in a jar and he does not know at which part of the jar it was pressed whether northward or southward all agree that it is neutralized our Ashi said in reality the doubt is whether the egg was laid on a festival day or on a weekday, but if the egg is a forbidden object which will become permitted, and anything forbidden which will become permitted, even though forbidden by rabbinical enactment is not neutralized, it was taught others say in the name of our Eliza the egg laid on a festival and the hen may be eaten. About what are we discussing? If about a hen kept for food, it is self evident that the egg and the hen are permitted, and if about a hen kept for laying eggs, then the egg and the hen are forbidden. Answered Arzara, it means that the egg may be eaten in virtue of the hen. What are the circumstances? Said Abbe, for example, when he bought it, the hen without specifying for what purpose, if it is killed, then it is retrospectively clear that it was intended to be kept for food. If it is not killed, then it is evident that it was intended to be kept for laying eggs. Armari says he states an exaggeration, for it was taught others say in the Name of our Eliza the egg may be eaten and its hen and its chicken and its shell. What is meant by its shell shall I say it means literally shell is then the shell fit for food again if it should mean a chicken and its shell surely the rabbis dispute with our Eliza B. Jacob only when the chicken is actually hatched but when it has not yet been hatched they do not dispute therefore the chicken and its shell is an exaggeration so also here it and its hen may be eaten is an exaggeration. It was stated a Sabbath and a festival following one another Rab says an egg laid on the one is forbidden on the other but our Yohanan maintains the egg laid on the one is permitted on the other shall we say that Rab holds that the Sabbath and a festival immediately following are regarded as one continuous day of holiness but Rab said the Halachah is according to the four elders who decided according to the opinion of our Eliza who says the Sabbath and the festival are two distinct. Days of holiness rather they differ here in Rabbi's law of Hakanah. Rabbi accepts Rabbi's law of Hakanah and our Yohanan rejects Rabbi's law of Hakanah. The same is disputed by Tanaim. If it an egg is laid on a Sabbath, it may be eaten on a festival. If it is laid on a festival, it may be eaten on a Sabbath. Our Judah says in the name of our Elizer, the dispute still continues for Beth I say it may be eaten, whereas Beth Hillel maintained it may not be eaten. The host of our Adabi Ahabah had some eggs from a festival which he wished to prepare for the Sabbath. He came before him and asked, Is it permitted to roast them today that we may eat there tomorrow? He answered him, What is in your mind in a dispute between Rabbi and our Yohanan? The Halachah says our Yohanan, but even our Yohanan only allows the egg to be quaffed on the morrow, but not on the same day it was laid, even as it was taught whether an egg was laid on a Sabbath or on a festival, one may not move it to cover there with a Vessel nor to support there with the leg of a bed. The host of our Papa, some say it was another man who came before our Papa had some eggs from a Sabbath which he wished to prepare on the immediately following festival. He came asking him, Is it permitted to eat them tomorrow? He answered him, Go away now and come tomorrow, for Rab would not appoint an interpreter for himself from the first day of the festival until the termination of its companion on account of inebriety when he came on it. Tomorrow he said to him, Talmud, Moss by to be if I had given my decision forthwith, I would have heard and told you that in a dispute between Rab and our Yohanan, the Halachah says our Yohanan, whereas Rabbah has said in these three cases, the law is as Rab both when he is lenient and when he is stringent. Our Yohanan said, If branches fell off a palm tree on a Sabbath, it is forbidden to burn them for firewood on the festival immediately following it and do not seek to refute me by referring to. The case of the egg, what is the reason? Because the egg is fit to be taken raw on the Sabbath day, it was late, and since you do not permit it to be eaten until the following day, one will surely know that on the same day that it was late, it is prohibited. But in the case of the branches which are not fit for the Sabbath day on which they fell, if you permit them to be used on the morrow, one might say that even on the same day they fell off, they are also permitted while their prohibition the day before was on account of the Sabbath when they were not fit for burning. Our Mahana said, if branches fell off a palm tree on a festival into an oven, one may add thereto a larger amount of wood kept in readiness and burn them together. But is he not handling a prohibited object since the greater part consists of that which is permitted when he is handling, he is handling that which is permitted, but he neutralizes a prohibited object at the outset, and we have learned one may. Not directly neutralize a prohibited object at the outset. This applies only where the object is prohibited according to the biblical law, but where it is only rabbinical why prohibited one may directly neutralize. But how is it to be explained according to our Ashi who says that an object forbidden which will become permitted is not neutralized even though forbidden by rabbinical enactment. This applies only where the prohibited object remains intact, but here the thing forbidden is indeed burnt up. It was stated with reference to the two festival days of the diaspora. Rab says the egg laid on the one is permitted on the other, and RC maintains the egg laid on the one is forbidden on the other. Shall it be said that RC holds the opinion that both days have one continuous holiness, but RC recited the Havdalah blessing between the first and second festival days. RC himself was in doubt, hence he acted in both cases with stringency. Arzara said logic. Supports RC for we are now well acquainted with the fixing of the new moon and nevertheless we do observe two days Abbe said logic supports Rab for we have learned in early times they used to light bonfires but on account of the mischief of the Samaritans the rabbis ordained that messengers should go forth now if the mischief of the Samaritans ceased we would all observe only one day and even during the Samaritan mischief wherever the messengers arrived they observed only one day. But now that we are well acquainted with the fixing of the new moon why do we observe two days because they sent word from their Palestine give heed to the customs of your ancestors which have come down to you for it might happen that the government might issue a decree and it will cause confusion in ritual it was stated with respect to the two festival days of the new year Rab and Samuel both say an egg laid on the first day is forbidden on the second day for we have learned in early. Times that the Sanhedrin admitted the testimony about new moon throughout the whole day once however the witnesses were late in arriving Talmud, Moss by and the Levitzer in the chant in consequence they enacted that they should only receive witnesses until Minha but if witnesses came from Minha onwards they observed the remainder of that day and the following day as Holy Rabbi said since the enactment of our Yohanan be the egg is permitted for we have learned after the destruction of the temple our Yohanan enacted the testimony concerning the appearance of new moon should be admitted the whole day said Abbe to him but if not Rab and Samuel both said that the egg is forbidden on the second day he replied to him I quote to you or Yohanan be and you tell me about Rab and Samuel but for Rab and Samuel our mission is a difficulty there is no difficulty this ruling applies to us Babylonians but that ruling applies to them the Palestinians but our Joseph says even from the time of the enactment of our Yohanan be and onwards the egg is prohibited on the second day what is the reason it is a matter which was decided by a majority vote and whatever was forbidden by a majority vote requires another majority vote to permit it said our Joseph whence do I infer this from what is written go say to them return yet to your tents and scripture further says when the trumpet soundeth long they shall come up to the mount and we have further learned the fourth year vineyard fruit was to be brought to Jerusalem from all places within a radius of one day's journey from Jerusalem and the following are its boundaries Alath on the south Akrab on the north lit on the west and the Jordan on the east and Allah said others say Rabbi Barhana in the name of our Yohanan what is the reason it is in order to decorate the streets of Jerusalem with fruits and it was further taught our Eliza had trees of the fourth year in a Vineyard to the east of Lidden near Kvar Tavi Talmud, Moss by Tzabi and he wished to renounce the vineyard for the poor but his disciples said to him Master thy colleagues have already taken a vote with respect to your case and permitted it who are meant
is disallowed, then the ayah is forbidden. But if the testimony of the witnesses is permitted, then the ayah is automatically permitted. Our Ada and our Sam and both of Bikalah had say even from the time of the enactment of our Yohan and Bizakai and onwards, the ayah is prohibited. Why the temple may very soon be rebuilt, and people would say, Did we not eat last year on the second day of the new year? The egg laid on the first day, now too we shall continue to eat it, and they will not know that in the previous year they, the two days were of two distinct forms of holiness, whereas now they are one continuous day of holiness. If so, we should not even accept the testimony of witnesses the whole day. What is the reason for the temple may very soon be rebuilt, and people might say, Did we not accept last year testimony concerning the new moon during the whole day long? Now too we shall continue to accept their testimony. Where is the comparison in this? The acceptance of testimony is. Entrusted to the Beth Din only, but the case of the egg is entrusted to all Rabbah says even since the enactment of our Yohan and Bizakai and onwards the egg is forbidden for does not our Yohan and Bizakai agree that if witnesses arrive after Minha the remainder of that day and the following day is observed as holy Rabbah further said the law is as Rab in the foregoing three cases whether he is lenient or stringent Talmud, Moss bites our Rabbah said on the first day of a festival only Gentiles may busy themselves with the corpse but on the second day Israelites may busy themselves with the corpse and even on the two festival days of the new year which however is not the case with respect to an egg the Nihartians say the same holds good even with respect to an egg for what is in your mind perhaps the month of Elul will be intercalated surely our Hainan of Ikahana said in the name of Rab from the days of Ezra and onward we do not find Elul ever intercalated Marzitra said this was said. Only when the corpse had already been lying for some time, but if it had not lain for a long time, we let it remain. Our Ashi says, even if it had not lain for a good long time, we do not let it remain unburied. What is the reason with regard to a dead body? The rabbis have made the second day of a festival as a weekday, even with respect to cutting for it a shroud and cutting for it a branch of myrtle. Rabbana said, but nowadays when there are glovers, we apprehend Rabbana was once sitting in the presence of our Ashi on one of the two festival days of the new year and noticing that he was troubled, he said to him, Why is the master troubled? He or Ashi replied, I have not set an Arab tabulin. Said he to him, Let the master prepare an Arab tabulin. Now, for did not Rabbana say a man may set an Arab tabulin on the first day of a festival for the second and stipulate? He replied, Granted that Rabbana indeed said so with respect to the two feast days of the diaspora, but did he then say this? Also with respect to the two days of the New Year's festival, but the Nihardians maintain that even an egg is permitted. Our Mordecai observed to him to Rabbin the master distinctly told me that he does not accept this teaching of the Nihardians. It was stated if a chicken was hashed out on a festival, Rab says it is forbidden, but Samuel some say our Yohanan maintains it is permitted. Rab says it is forbidden because it is muksa, but Samuel some say our Yohanan maintains it is permitted since it makes itself permitted through Sheshad Arkahana and RC said to Rab what difference is there between this and a calf born on a festival? He replied to them the case of the calf is different since it was regarded as mukin by virtue of its mother, and what difference is there between this and a calf born on a festival from a trefa? Rab remained silent, said Rab some say it was our Joseph. Why was Rab silent? He should have replied to them this calf is permitted since it is mukin. For dogs through its trefa mother Abbe replied to him Talmud, Moss bites of be seeing that that which is mukin for human consumption is not mukin for dogs for we have learned one may cut up cords for cattle and a carcass for dogs our Judah says if the animal was not yet nibbled on the eve of the Sabbath it is forbidden for it was not mukin can that which is mukin for dogs be considered mukin for human beings he said to him it is even so that which is mukin for human consumption is not mukin for dogs for that which is usable for man one does not throw to dogs but that which is mukin for dogs is also mukin for human consumption for the mind of man is directed to everything which may be fitting for him Abaritha was taught in accordance with Rab and Abaritha was taught in accordance with Samuel or as some say our Yohanan Abaritha was taught in accordance with Rab a calf which is born on a festival is permitted but a chicken which is hatched on a festival is Forbidden and what difference is there between the one and the other? The calf is mukin by virtue of its mother through Sheshadah, but the chicken is not mukin by virtue of its another. Barry, though, was taught in accordance with Samuel, or as some say, our Yohanan, a calf which is born on a festival is permitted, a chicken which is hatched on a festival is permitted. Why the calf is mukin by virtue of its mother and the chicken makes itself permitted through slaughter? Our rabbis taught a chicken which is hatched on a festival is forbidden. Our Eliezer B. Jacob says it is forbidden even on a weekday since its eyes are not yet open. With whose opinion does the following passage agree? Even all creeping things that creep upon the earth, this includes chickens whose eyes are not yet open. With whose opinion the opinion of our Eliezer B. Jacob, our said in the name of Rabbin is completed on its issue from the fowl. What is meant by completed on its issue? If we say it means it is completed. On its issue, so that the egg may be eaten with milk, which implies when it is still within the hen, the egg may not be eaten with milk. But surely we have learned if one kills a hen and finds therein completely formed eggs, these may be consumed with milk. And if it means it is completed on its issue, so that the egg may be eaten on a festival, which implies when the egg is still within the hen, it may not be eaten on the festival. But surely we have learned if one kills a hen and finds therein eggs completely formed, they are permitted to be eaten on the festival. And if you say that he informed us in the very though what we do not learn in the mission of this too, we have learned in the mission if an egg is laid on a festival, Beth Shammai say it may be eaten on the same day, but Beth Hillel maintain it may not be eaten until the day is over. Now Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel dispute us only about the egg that is laid, but if the egg is in the hen, all agree that it is permitted. And if you maintain that Beth Hillel prohibit the egg even when it is within the hen, and the reason he, the author of the mission, quotes their dispute with respect to an egg laid is in order to manifest to you the extent of the opinion of Beth Shammai that even if it is laid, it is permitted. Then as to that which we have learned, if one slaughtered a hen and found their eggs completely formed, they are permitted to be eaten on the festival. Who will its author be? Neither Beth Shammai nor Beth Hillel. Therefore, it is completed on its issue means that the egg can hatch chickens, but the egg found in the body of the hen cannot hatch chickens. What is its practical bearing with respect to buying and selling? As once happened when someone called out to the salesman who has eggs, Talmud, Moss bites out of a cackling hen when they gave him eggs found in a slaughtered hen. He came to our am I complaining? Who said to them it is an erroneous sale and he can withdraw from it, but. This is self-evident. You might say that this buyer really wanted the eggs for eating, and the reason he asked for eggs of a cackling hen is that such eggs are hard-shelled, and that the practical outcome of his claim is that he must refund him the difference. So he informs us that this is not so. There was once one who said to the salesman who has made it eggs for sale, who has made it eggs when they gave him unmade eggs. He came to our MI who said to them it is an erroneous sale, and he can withdraw from the transaction. But this is self-evident. You might say that he needed the eggs only for eating, and the reason he asked for made eggs is that they are richer, and that the practical bearing of this is that they must refund him the difference. So he informs us that the whole transaction is fraudulent. Alternatively, what is meant it is completed on its issue. It means it is completed with the coming forth of its greater part, and it is accordance with our Yohanan for our. Yohanan said, if the greater part of an egg issued on the day before the festival and went back, it may be eaten on the festival day. There are some scholars who say what is meant it is completed on its issue. It means it is completed with the coming forth of the whole of it, only with the coming forth of the whole of it, but not with its greater part. And this is to reject the opinion of our Yohanan to revert to the main text. If one slaughtered a hen and found therein completely formed eggs, these may be taken with milk. Our Jacob says, if the eggs were attached to the hen by sinews, they are forbidden. Who is the author of that which our rabbis taught? He who eats of a carcass of a clean bird, of its cluster of eggs, or of its bones, or of its veins, or of its flesh torn off while alive is clean. But he who eats of its ovary, or of its crop, or of its entrails, or if he melted its fat and swallowed it, he is unclean. Who is the author of the teaching? He who eats of its cluster of eggs. Is clean said our Joseph it is not in
Difference with respect to the teaching of Armari son of Arkahana for Armari son of Arkahana said if one examined a henku on the eve of the festival and could not find in it an egg and on the morrow he rose early and found in it an egg it is permitted but did he not examine the nest I say that he did not examine it very carefully and even if he did examine it very carefully I would say that perhaps the greater part of the egg came out before the festival and went back into this. Ruling is in accordance with the opinion of Aryohanan but that is not so for our Jose B. Saul said in the name of Rab if one examined a henku on the eve of the festival and did not find in it an egg and on the morrow he rose early and found an egg in it it is prohibited this latter passage refers to eggs laid through friction with the earth if so with respect to the teaching of Armari might I not also say the egg was laid through friction with the earth when there is a cock near her. Even when there is a cock near her might I not still say that the egg was laid through friction with the earth said Rabbana there is a tradition that wherever there is a cock near her she will not fructify eggs through friction and how near should the cock be our gamda replied in the name of Rab sufficiently near Talmud, Moss bites a bee that the hen can hear his crowing in the daytime Armari gave a decision in a case where the cock was at a distance of 60 houses but if there is a river between them she the hen does not cross over but if there is a bridge she crosses over if there is a plank she does not cross over it happened once that a hen crossed over even a plank how have you explained it with respect to unmated eggs and why particularly teach when he examined the hen coop even if he had not examined it should also be prohibited if he did not examine it I might say the egg was from yesterday if so even if he had examined it I might still say that the Greater part of the egg came out yesterday and went back and should therefore be permitted in accordance with Aryohanan. The contingency stated by Aryohanan is rare. Our Jose B. Saul further said in the name of Rav, this pulverized garlic is a danger to be left exposed. Bet Shammai say the quantity of leaven is of the size of an olive and leavened bread is of the size of a date. What is Bet Shammai's reason? If so, the divine law should only have written about leavened bread and not about leaven. And I should have said if leavened bread, the acidity of which is not very great, is forbidden at the size of an olive. How much more should leaven the acidity of which is very great be forbidden at the size of an olive? And why does the divine law need to state leaven in order to teach that the standard of the one is not like the standard of the other? And Beth Hillel, it is necessary for the divine law to state both. For if the divine law had written only about leaven, I might have. Said that the reason leaven is forbidden to be seen is that its acidity is very great, but leaven bread, the acidity of which is not great, I might have said is not forbidden to be seen at all. It is therefore necessary to state leaven bread, and if the divine law had stated leaven bread, I might have said that the reason leaven bread is forbidden to be seen is that it is fit for food, but leaven which is not fit for food, I might have said is not forbidden to be seen at all. Therefore, both are necessary. Shall we say that Beth Shammai does not agree with what Arzara had said? For Arzara said the scripture verse begins with the term leaven and concluded with the term leaven bread in order to teach that leaven and leaven bread are alike with respect to eating. No one differs about the size; they only differ with respect to the removal of the leaven from the house. Beth Shammai is of the opinion that we do not learn the law of removal from that of eating. While Beth Hillel maintains that we do learn removal from eating, likewise it was stated, our Jose Bihanana said the dispute is only with respect to the removal, but with respect to eating, all agree that both leavened bread and leaven are forbidden of the size of all olive. Likewise, it was also taught, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee. Herein lies the dispute between Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel, where Beth Shammai say that leaven is the size of an olive, and leavened bread is of the size of a date. But Beth Hillel maintained that both are of the size of an olive. He who slaughters game or poultry on a festival, etc. He who slaughters implies only if he has done so, but not that it may be done at the very outset. Then consider the subsequent clause. But Beth Hillel maintained he must not slaughter, etc. Whence it follows that the first tana holds that he may slaughter at the outset. This is no difficulty. He means he must not. Slaughter and cover, etc. But consider the final clause. But they agree that if he slaughtered, he may dig with a shovel and cover. Whence it follows, the first clause does not mean only if he has done it. Answered rather, this is what the Mishnah says: the slaughterer who comes to ask advice, how should one answer him? Bet Shem, I say, one answers him: slaughter, dig, and cover. But Beth Hillel maintained he must not slaughter unless he had loose earth set in readiness before the festival. Our Joseph says this is what the Mishnah says: the slaughterer who comes to ask advice, how should one answer him? Bet Shem, I say, one answers him: go and dig, slaughter, and cover. But Beth Hillel maintained he may not dig unless he had loose earth set in readiness from before the festival. Said Abay to our Joseph: shall it be said that you, sir, and Rabbi disagree with respect to the teaching of Arzara in Rab's name? Arzara said in the name Rab, the slaughterer of game or poultry must put earth beneath you. Receive the blood and earth above for it is said he shall pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. It does not say earth, but in earth teaching that the slaughterer must put earth beneath and earth above you, sir. Therefore accept the teaching of Arzara and Rabbah rejects the teaching of Arzara. He answered him, both I and Rabbah accept the teaching of Arzara, and our dispute here is as follows Rabbah is of the opinion that he may only slaughter if there is already earth beneath you. Receive the blood, but if not he may not slaughter, for we apprehend that he might change his mind and not slaughter, but according to my view, it is better for if you will not permit him to dig, he will come to be deprived of the joy of the festival. But they agree that if some has already slaughtered, he may dig up earth with a shovel and cover the blood. Arzara is said in the name of Rabjuda, this only holds good when the shovel had already been sticking in the earth since the previous. Day, but does he not cause crumbling of the earth? Answered our high B. Ashi in the name of Rab Talmud. Moss by today we are dealing with a case where the soil is loose, but does he not make a hole? This is according to our Abba for our Abba said if one takes a hole on the Sabbath and only requires its soil, he is guiltless in regard to it because the ashes of the hearth are mukin considered as having been prepared. Who is speaking here of the ashes of the hearth? Answered Rabba Rebus and it. Ashes of the hearth are mukin. Rab Judah said in Rab's name they only taught this when it the fire had been kindled on the day of the festival, but if it had been kindled on the festival itself, it is forbidden. But if the ashes are suitable to roast an egg therein, it is permitted. Likewise, it was also taught when they said that the ashes of the hearth are mukin. They only said so when it the fire had been kindled before the festival, but if it had been kindled on the festival, it is. Forbidden, but if they are suitable to roast an egg therein, it is permitted. If one had brought earth into his garden or into his wasteland before the festival, one may cover the blood there with Rab Judah. Further said in the name of Rab, a man may bring a basket full of earth into his house and may use it for whatever is necessary. Marzitra pointed out in the name of Marzitra the Great, this only holds good if he had appointed a special corner for it. An objection was raised, one may not slaughter a koi on a festival, and if he did slaughter it, he may not cover its blood. Now, if this were so, let him cover it the blood in accordance with the opinion of Rab Judah. But even according to your point of view, let him cover the blood with ashes of the hearth or with earth in which a shovel was stuck. Therefore, you must need say that we are dealing here with a case where he has not any of these. So also explain that we are dealing with a case where he has not a basket full of earth. In the house, if so, then why, particularly with respect to an animal about which there is a doubt whether its blood requires covering, even with respect to an animal about which there is no doubt, one also may not cover the blood by digging. He uses the expression not only, but also not only may he not slaughter in the case of an animal about which there is no doubt, but even in the case of an animal about which there is a doubt, where I might have said that because of the joy of the festival, he should be allowed to slaughter without covering the blood. He informs us that he may not slaughter Talmud, Moss bites a bee, but surely since he teaches at the end of the clause, and if he did slaughter it, he may not cover its blood. Understand from this that we are speaking of a case where he has earth in readiness. Therefore, answered rather the ashes of the hearth are regarded as mukin for the covering of blood of animals about which there is no doubt, but they are not regarded as mukin. With respect to animals about which there is some doubt whether their blood requires covering, why are they not considered mukin in respect of the blood of the animal about which there is a doubt because he would be making a hole in the ashes on the festival? Then, in
Her to cover there with the blood of a bird, he may also cover there with the excrement of a child in the West. They say our Jose Hama and our Zara, some say Rabba the son of our Jose Bihama and our Zara differ there in one says Koi is analogous to excrement and the other says Koi is not analogous to excrement. It may be proved that it was Rabba who said that Koi is analogous to excrement for Rabba said if one brought in her to cover there with excrement of a child, he may cover there with the blood of a bird, but if he brought in her to cover there with the blood of a bird, he may not cover there with the excellent of a child. Conclude from this that it was Rabba Rami the son of our Yuba said the reason why we are not allowed to cover the blood of a Koi is that it is a preventive measure against permitting the use of it. So if it is so, it should be prohibited even on a weekday. On a weekday, people will say because he wants to clean his court, what is there to be said if he slaughtered? The koi on a dust heap and further what will you say if one comes to ask advice on a weekday even if there is any doubt the rabbis would tell him go take trouble and cover the blood but on a festival if there is a doubt would the rabbis tell him go take trouble and cover the blood our zero learned it is not only with respect to a koi that the rabbis said thus but even if one slaughtered cattle game and poultry and their blood became mingled it is also prohibited to cover such mingled blood on a festival said our jose b jason i this was only said when one cannot cover it the mingled blood with one thrust of the shovel but if one can cover it with one thrust of the shovel it is permitted but is not this self-evident you might assume that we should prohibit even one shovelful less perchance he might go on to use two shovelful so he informs us that one is allowed rabbis said if one slaughtered a bird on the eve of the festival and omitted to cover the blood one may not cover it on the festival Talmud, Mos Baitza, if one prepared dough on the eve of the festival he may separate from it Hala on the festival the father of Samuel says even if one prepared dough on the eve of the festival he may not separate from it Hala on the festival shall it be said that Samuel disputes with his father for Samuel said with respect to Hala outside Palestine one may go on eating of the dough and separate the priestly portion at the end answered Rabbi does then. Not Samuel agreed that if one designated it by name that it is forbidden to be eaten by Laman Mishnah Beth Shammai say one may not carry a ladder on a festival from one dukkot to another but he may incline it from one pigeonhole to another but Beth Hillel permit this Gemara Arhan and BMI said the dispute refers only to public ground when Beth Shammai is of the opinion that whoever sees him carrying the ladder might say that he needed it for plastering his roof Beth Hillel hold his. Dukkot proves his intention but in private ground all agree that it is permitted but it is not so for Rab Judah said in the name of Rab wherever the sages have forbidden anything because of appearances it is forbidden even in the most innermost chambers it is a controversy of Tanaim for it was taught one may spread them out in the sun but not in the presence of people our Eliezer and our Simeon forbid this other say thus Arhan and BMI said the dispute refers to private ground for Beth. Shammai accept the teaching of Rab Judah in the name of Rab and Beth Hillel reject the teaching of Rab Judah in the name of Rab but on public ground all agree that it is forbidden shall it be said that Rab ruled as Beth Shammai it is a controversy of Tanaim for it was taught he may spread them out in the sun but not in the presence of people our Eliezer and our Simeon forbid this Talmud, Mos Bites of B. Our Mishnah is not in agreement with the following Tana for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel agree that one may carry the letter from one Dukkot to another Dukkot they dispute only about bringing it back Beth Shammai saying one may not bring it back and Beth Hillel maintaining one may even bring it back our Judah said these words apply only to a Dukkot letter but with respect to a loft letter all agree that it is forbidden our Dosa says one may incline it the letter from one pigeonhole to another other say in the name of our Dosa one may even move it with short hop like steps the sons of our high went out to the villages to inspect the fields when they came back their father asked them has any legal question come before you they replied to him a case of carrying a loft letter came before us and we permitted it he said to them go and forbid what you have permitted they were of the opinion since our Judah said that the Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not dispute with respect to a loft letter it follows that the first tenor. Holds that they do differ even there, but this is not so. Our Judah is only explaining the view of the first Tanoans. Is this known since the list Tana states one may carry a letter from one Dukkot to another Dukkot? If therefore you maintain that they differ with respect to a loft letter instead of this phrase, one may carry a letter from one Dukkot to another Dukkot, he should say one may carry a letter to a Dukkot. Evidently, this is what he means only the letter of a Dukkot, but not that of a loft, and the other does it then state a letter of a Dukkot. It only states from one Dukkot to another Dukkot, indicating even to any number of Dukkots. Others say a case of inclining a loft letter came before us, and we permitted it. He said to them, Go and forbid what you have permitted. They were of the opinion that what the first Tana forbids our dosa permits, but it is not so. Rather, is it what the first Tana permits our dosa forbids, but he may incline it from one pigeonhole to another etc. Accordingly we see that Beth Shammai is stringent in regard to the joy of the festival and Beth Hillel is lenient but the following contradicts this if one slaughters game or poultry on a festival Beth Shammai say he may dig up earth with a shovel and cover the blood but Beth Hillel maintain one may not slaughter unless he has loose earth prepared from the day before the festival or Yohanan replied the authorities should be reversed whence does this follow perhaps Beth Shammai say thus there only when there is already a shovel sticking in the earth but not where there is no shovel sticking in the earth or perhaps Beth Hillel permit here only because the dovecot makes it evident but there it is not permitted rather if there is a difficulty the following is the difficulty Beth Shammai say one may not take pigeons unless he stirred them up the day before but Beth Hillel say he stands and declares this one or that one shall I take Accordingly we see that Beth Shammai is stringent in regard to the joy of the festival and Beth Hillel is lenient but the following contradicts this if one slaughters game or poultry on a festival etc. Our Yohan and replied the authorities should be reversed whence does this follow perhaps Beth Shammai permit only when there is already a shovel sticking in the earth Talmud, Mos Baitza but not when there is no shovel sticking in the earth or perhaps Beth Hillel rule thus only here. Because since it is Muksa it is sufficient if he stands and declares this one or that one shall I take but there they do not rule thus rather if there is a difficulty the following is the difficulty Beth Shammai say one may not take a pestle to cut up meat thereon but Beth Hillel permit accordingly we see that Beth Shammai is stringent in regard to the joy of the festival and Beth Hillel is lenient but the following contradicts this if one slaughters game or poultry on a festival. Beth Shammai etc. Our Yohanan replied the authorities should be reversed whence does this follow perhaps it is not so perhaps Beth Shammai ruled thus only there where there is already a shovel sticking in the earth but not when there is no shovel sticking in the earth or perhaps Beth Hillel ruled thus only here because if the pestle bears the designation of utensil but there they do not rule thus rather if there is a difficulty the following is the difficulty Beth Shammai say one may not lay out a hide for treading on and one may not lift it up unless it has sticking to it flesh as much as an olive but Beth Hillel permit accordingly we see that Beth Shammai is stringent in regard to the joy of the festival and Beth Hillel is lenient but the following contradicts that if one slaughters game or poultry on a festival etc. Our Yohanan replied the authorities should be reversed whence does this follow perhaps it is not so perhaps Beth Shammai ruled thus only there where there is already a shovel sticking in the earth, but not when there is no shovel sticking in the earth, or perhaps Beth Hillel rule thus only here because if the height is fit for sitting thereon, but there they do not rule thus rather if there is a difficulty the following is the difficulty Beth Shammai say one may not take down shutters on a festival, but Beth Hillel permit them even to be put back. Accordingly, we see that Beth Shammai is stringent in regard to the joy of the festival and Beth Hillel is lenient, but the following contradicts this if one slaughters game or poultry on a festival, etc. It is well that the rulings of Beth Shammai are not contradictory there. It is permitted only when there is already a shovel sticking in the earth, but here there is no shovel sticking in the earth, but the views of Beth Hillel are contradictory, said Aryohan and the authorities should be reversed. Why reverse the authorities? Perhaps Beth Hillel rule thus only here because building. And pulling down do not apply to utensils, but there they do not rule thus m
of Beth Hillel is with respect to the cleansing of the entrances from now onwards. Arashai also said the statement of Beth Hillel is with respect to the cleansing of the entrances from now onwards only from now onwards but not retrospectively. Rabbah says in reality the statement of Beth Hillel is even in respect of cleansing retrospectively and here the reason is lest he might take up a pigeon and put it down again take up a pigeon and put it down again and thus come to take one which is not fit for him but you say it is sufficient if he stands and says this or that will I take this only applies on the eve of the festival Talmud, Moss bites a bee but on the festival itself it is forbidden for sometimes the seemingly fat ones are found to be lean and the seemingly lean ones are found to be fat and thus he handles birds which are not fit for him or else sometimes they may all be found lean and he will leave them and thus come to refrain from the joy of the festival. Mishnah if he designated black doves but found white white but found black two but found three they are all forbidden three but found two they are permitted if he designated doves inside the nest and found them in front of the nest they are forbidden but if not except these were there they are permitted Gemara is not the self-evident said Rabbi we are dealing here with a case where he had designated black and white and on the following morning he found black ones in the place of it. White and white ones in the place of the black you might say they are the very same doves and they had only exchanged their nests so he informs us that those are gone away and these are different ones shall it be said that this mission supports the view of Arhanna for Arhanna said if majority and proximity are in opposition you follow the majority as Abbe has explained when there is a board likewise also here explain when there is a board if he designated two doves but found three they are all forbidden whichever way you take it they are forbidden if these are other doves then they are indeed others if they are the same then there is another one mixed up with them if he designated three doves but found two they are permitted what is the reason they are indeed the same and one of them has flown away shall it be said that the mission is according to Rabbi and not according to the sages for we have learned if one deposited one hundred zoos and found two. Hundred it is assumed that there is hollow money and second tithe money mixed together. This is the opinion of Rabbi, but the sages say the entire sum is hollow money. If he deposited two hundred zoos and found one hundred, it is assumed that one hundred has been left and one hundred has been taken away. This is the opinion of Rabbi, but the sages say the entire sum is hollow money. You can even say that it is in accordance with the sages, for it was stated thereon are Yohanan and R. Eliezer both say doves are different since they are used to hop about, but why is it necessary to explain here doves are different since they are used to hop about? Surely it has already been stated with respect to this very very that there is a dispute between R. Yohanan and R. Eliezer. One says the controversy between Rabbi and the sages is when there were two purses, but when there is only one purse, all agree that the entire sum is hollow, and the other says the dispute is when there is. One purse, but when there are two purses, all agree that we are to assume 100 has been left and 100 taken away. It is well according to the view that the dispute relates to two purses, hence it is necessary to explain here it is different with doves since they are used to hop about, but according to the view that the dispute is only with respect to one purse, but when there are two purses, all agree that 100 had been left and 100 taken. Why is it necessary to answer? It is above, surely you have said indeed that they do not dispute with respect to two purses, said Arashi. We are dealing here with doves tied together and with purses fastened together. Doves pull themselves apart from one another, but purses do not pull themselves apart from one another. And Rabbi, he will answer you in the case of purses too. It occurs Talmud, Moss bites out that there not becomes worn out within the nest and found them in front of the nest, they are forbidden, shall it be said. That this supports the view of Arhanana for Arhanana said if majority and proximity are in opposition you follow the majority said Abbe when there is a board Rabbah says we are treating here of two nests one above the other and it goes without saying that if he designated doves in the lower nest and did not designate those in the upper and on the morrow finds doves in the lower nest and none in the upper they are forbidden for we assume that those of the lower nest had flown away and these had indeed hopped down but even if he designated doves in the upper nest and did not designate those in the lower and he came and found some in the upper and did not find any in the lower these two are forbidden for we assume that those had flown away and these had indeed fluttered up but if not except these were there they are permitted what are the circumstances if you say that this refers to those which can fly then it is possible to assume that those had flown Away and these are different ones and if this refers to those which can only hop and if there is another nest within 50 cubits they might indeed have hopped away and if there is no other nest within 50 cubits it is obvious that they are permitted for Marak Babi Hama said whatever hops does not hop more than 50 cubits in truth it means where there is another nest within 50 cubits but e.g. it is situated around a corner you might say that they has indeed hopped away so it informs us that they only hop along as long as by turning they see their nest but if not they do not hop away Mishnah Beth I say you may not take a pestle to cut up meat thereon but Beth Hillel permitted Beth I say one may not place a hide for treading on nor may he lift it up unless there is as much as an olive of flesh with it but Beth Hillel permitted Gemara Tana Tot and they both agree that if he had already cut up meat thereon it the pestle may not be moved away. Said the dispute is only with respect to a pestle, but in the case of a butcher's block, all agree that it is permitted. This is obvious. We learned a pestle. You might say that the same applies even to a butcher's block, and the reason it states pestle is in order to inform you of the extent of the view of Beth Hillel that even an object specially made for work which is forbidden is also permitted. Hence, he informs us that it is not so. Other state of himself replied, It is only necessary to teach that even a new butcher's block is permitted. You might say he may change his mind and not cut up meat on it, so he informs us that this is not so. Do then Beth Shammai not fear the possibility of one changing his mind? Surely it was taught Beth Shammai say one may not lead the slaughterer and the knife to the animal to be slaughtered, nor the animal to the slaughterer and the knife, but Beth Hillel say one may bring the one to the other. Beth Shammai say one may not carry spices or a Pestle to the mortar, nor the mortar to the spices or the pestle, but Beth Hillel say one may bring the one to the other. What comparison is this with respect to an animal? It is well he may come to change his mind, saying, Let us leave this lean animal, and I will bring another animal which is fatter than this. With respect to a dish, too, he may come to change his mind, saying, Let us leave this dish which requires spices, and I will bring another dish which does not require spices. But here, what are we to suppose he will change his mind and not cut up the meat since he has already slaughtered the animal? It has to be cut up. Beth I say one may not place a hide a tot, and they both agree that one may salt upon it meat for roasting. Abe said it was taught only when it is for roasting, but not for boiling. This is obvious. We learn for roasting this. Abe informs us that even for roasting to salt it almost as much as for boiling is also forbidden by rabbis. Taught one may neither salt pieces of suet for turn them about they reported in the name of Arjashua one may spread them out in the air on picks of wood Armat said the Halachah is as Arjashua other state Armat said the Halachah is not as Arjashua this is well according to the version the Halachah is as Arjashua then it is necessary for I might say when an individual and a majority are in dispute the Halachah is as a majority hence he informs us that here the Halachah is as the individual but according to the version the Halachah is not as Arjashua it is obvious for when an individual and a majority are in dispute the Halachah is as a majority you might think that the opinion of Arjashua is logical for if you will not permit him he will altogether forbear to slaughter so he informs us and why is this different from the case of placing a hide before the trading place Talmud Moss bites a bee there it is not manifest since it the hide is fit to be used as a met to sit on here, however, he will be led to argue what is the reason that the rabbis permitted me to spread it on picks so that it should not become offensive. What difference is there whether I spread them or salt them? Rab Judah in the name of Samuel said a man may salt on a festival several pieces of meat together, even though he needs only one piece. Our Adabi Ahabah made use of an artifice and salted piece after piece. Mishnah Beth I say one may not take down shutters on a festival, but Beth Hillel permit even to put them back again tomorrow. What kind of shutters said? Well, the shutters of a shopkeeper stall. Allah further said there are three cases where the rabbis allowed the completing of the action on account of its beginning, and they are as follows the placing of the hide for people to tread on the taking down of shutters from stalls and the replacing of the plaster in the temple. And Rabbah said in the name of Rabbi Judah also he who opens his
Case of a priest performing a temple service but not when not performing a temple service. The case of opening a cask. We have also learned busy who opens his cask of wine or commences cutting into his dough for the requirements of the festival. Arjuna says he may finish selling them after the festival, but the sages say he may not finish. You might say that the rabbis regarded the uncleanness of an MHRS during the period of the festival as cleanness, and therefore, even though he had not commenced, it is also permitted. So he informs us that they only permitted its completion on account of the beginning. Therefore, only if he had commenced to sell them during the festival, but not if he had not commenced. And Allah, what is the reason that he does not state this? He does not deal with cases where there is a dispute, but there is a dispute concerning those two. The opinion of Beth Shammai against that of Beth Hillel is regarded as having no authority. Our mission is. Not according to the following Tanna, for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel agree that one may take down the shutters on a festival. They dispute only about replacing Beth Shammai, maintaining one may not replace them while Beth Hillel rules one may even replace them. What is the said where they the shutters have hinges, but if they have no hinges, all agree that it is permitted even to replace them, but it was taught this applies only if they have no hinges. But if they have hinges, all agree that it is forbidden. Said Abbe, when they have hinges on the side, all agree that it is forbidden. They only dispute where there is a hinge in the middle Talmud. Moss bites out one master holds that we preventively prohibit a hinge in the center on account of a hinge at the side, and the other master is of the opinion we do not preventively prohibit Mishnah Beth Shammai say one may not carry out an infant or a or a scroll of the law into public ground, but Beth Hillel permitted Gemara Atana taught before our Isaac B. of Dimi he who slaughters a free will burnt offering on a festival is flagellated said he to him he who taught you this held the opinion of Beth Shammai who maintain we do not say since carrying out is permitted for what is actually necessary for the preparation of food it is also permitted for that which is not necessary for if he held the opinion of Beth Hillel surely they maintain since carrying out is permitted where it is necessary it is also permitted where it is not necessary so also here since slaughtering is permitted where it is necessary it is also permitted where it is not necessary to this rabbi demurred once do you know that Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel differ on this point perhaps they differ as to whether the laws of Arab and carrying out apply to Sabbath but the laws of Arab and carrying out do not apply to a festival one master is of the opinion Arab and the laws of carrying out apply to both the Sabbath and the festival and the other master maintains Arab and the laws of carrying out apply to Sabbath but Arab and the laws of carrying out do not apply to the festival as it is written neither carry forth the burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day only on the Sabbath day but not on the festival to the Sarjos of the in turn if so let them dispute with respect to stones since however they do not dispute about stones infer from it that they differ with respect to carrying out things that are not necessary in the preparation of food are Yohanan is also of the opinion that they differ in whether we say since carrying out is permitted for what is necessary in the preparation of food it is also permitted for what is not necessary in the preparation of food for a tanner recited before our Yohanan he who boils the thigh sinew on a festival in milk and eats it is flagellated on five counts for unnecessarily cooking the sinew on a festival for eating it. Sinew for boiling meat and milk for eating meat with milk and Talmud, Moss bites a bee for kindling fire said here Yohanan to him go teach this outside the academy what you have said with respect to kindling and cooking has no authority and if you say that it has an authority that authority must be Beth Shammai who maintain that we do not say since carrying out on a festival is permitted for what is necessary it is also permitted for what is not necessary likewise they maintain here that we do not say since the kindling of fire is permitted on a festival for what is necessary it is also permitted for what is not necessary for according to Beth Hillel since they maintain that we do say since carrying out is permitted for what is necessary it is also permitted for what is not necessary so also they would maintain here that we say since the kindling of fire is permitted for what is necessary it is also permitted for what is not necessary Mishnah Beth Shammai say you may not take to the priest hallel or priestly dues on a festival whether they were separated on the day before or on the same day but Beth Hillel permitted said Beth Shammai to them an analogy supports our view hell and priestly dues are a gift to the priest and Teramah is likewise a gift to the priest just as one may not take to the priest Teramah so one may not take to him priestly dues Beth Hillel replied to them no if you say in the case of Teramah which he has not the right to separate will you say the same with respect to priestly dues which he is permitted to separate Gemara now it was assumed that the Mishnah means where they were both separated on that day and slaughtered on that day and where they were both separated the day before and slaughtered the day before who is the authority for our Mishnah it is neither our Jose nor our Judah but the others for it was taught our Judah said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel did not differ concerning the dues which were Separated on the eve of the festival, both agreeing that you may take them together with the dues which were separated and killed on the same day as the festival, they differ only whether one may take them by themselves. When Beth Shammai say you may not take them, and Beth Hillel maintain you may take them, and this is how Beth Shammai argued hell and priestly dues are a gift to the priest, and Teramah is a gift to the priest, just as you may not take Teramah, so may you not take priestly dues. Beth Hillel replied to them, No, if you say thus of Teramah which he has not the right to set apart on a festival, would you say the same of priestly dues which he has the right to set apart? Our Jose said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ about the priestly dues, both agreeing that you may take them. They dispute only with respect to Teramah when Beth Shammai say you may not take it, and Beth Hillel maintain you may take it, and this is how Beth Hillel argued hell and Priestly dues are a gift to the priest and Teramah is a gift to the priest just as you may take the priestly dues to the priest so may you take Teramah to him Beth Shammai replied to them no if you say thus a priestly dues which he has the right to separate on a festival would you say the same of Teramah which he has not the right to separate others say Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ about Teramah both agreeing that you may not take it they dispute only with respect to the priestly dues when Beth Shammai say you may not take them and Beth Hillel maintain you may take them now shall it be said that the mission is the ruling of others and not the ruling of our Judah said Rabbah does it then say which were separated that day and killed that day it only says which were separated etc but in reality they were slaughtered the day before accordingly shall it be said that the mission is according to our Judah and not according to the others you can even say it agrees with the others for they speak of priestly dues separated on a festival from those animals slaughtered the day before if so they are identical with our Judah they differ in respect of being brought together with other priestly dues Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Halashad is as our Jose our Tobi the son of our Nehemiah had a jug of wine of Teramah he came to our Joseph asking him may I carry it now on the festival to the priest he answered him thus did Rab Judah say in the name of Samuel the Halashad is as our Jose the host of Rab son of our Hanan had bundles of mustard stocks and he asked him is it permissible to crush it on the festival and eat of it he could not answer he went to Rabbah who replied you may rub ears of corn together and crumble pods on a festival Abbe raised an objection he who rubs ears of corn on the eve of the Sabbath may winnow them on the following day Sabbath from hand to hand and eat but he may not winnow them with a reed Basket nor with a dish he who rubs ears of corn on the eve of a festival may winnow them on the following day the festival little by little and eat even with a reed basket and even with a dish but not with a tray nor with a winnowing fan nor in a sieve now only on the eve of the festival is rubbing of corn stated to be permitted but not on the festival itself you may even say that it may be done on the festival itself but because he states in the first part of the passage on the eve of the Sabbath he also states in the concluding part on the eve of the festival if so we find that one has the right to separate on a festival and we have learned no if you say that with respect to Teramah which he has no right to separate etc this is no difficulty Talmud Moss bites out one is according to Rabbi and the other is according to our Jose son of our Judah for it was taught if he brought in ears of corn to make dough therefrom he may eat a slender repast thereof and it is exempt from Teramah, if however he brought in the ears of corn in order to rub the in together, Rabbi declares them liable to Teramah and our Jose son of Arjuda exempts them, but even according to our Jose son of Arjuda, it may also occur when, for example, one has brought in ears of corn to
In respect of the Terra the tithe and it is in accordance with Arabau's dictum in the name of Arsimian Belakish for Arabau said in the name of Arsimian Belakish the first tithe Levite which one anticipated while the corn was yet in the ears its designation renders it tebal in respect of the Terra of the tithe why must he the Levite beat out the seeds let him say to the priest just as they have given them to me so will I give them to you said Rabba this is a penalty. Likewise has it been taught a Levite to whom his tithes were given while the corn was still in the ear must make it fit for a barn if it is grapes he must make them into wine if olives he must turn them into oil only then does he separate the Terra of the tithe and give same to the priest for just as the great Terra is taken Talmud, Moss bites to be only from the threshing floor and from the wine press so also is the Terra of the tithe to be taken only from the threshing floor and from the wine press it is stated above he estimates surely it requires exact measuring the author of this is Ab Eliezer Begimel for it was taught Ab Eliezer Begimel says and your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you scripture speaks of two heave offerings one being the great Terima and the other the Terima from the Levites tithe just as the great Terima may be separated by estimation and by mental determination so may the Terima from the Levites tithe be separated by estimation and by mental determination the text above stated are about set in the name of Arsimian Belakish the first tithe which one anticipated while the corn was yet in the ears its designation renders it evil in respect of the Terima from the Levites tithe what is the reason said Rabba because it already bears the name tithe Arsimian Belakish said the first tithe which was anticipated while the corn was yet in the ears is exempt from the great Terima for scripture says and ye shall Offer up an eve offering of it for the Lord a tithe of the tithe a tithe of the tithe have I commanded you but not the great terima and a tithe of the tithe said our papa to obey if so even if he anticipated it at the barn too he replied to him it is for your sake that scripture states out of all your gifts ye shall offer every eve offering of the Lord what reason do you see in the one case it is already corn in the other it is not already corn we have learned elsewhere he who hulls barley may hull it grain by grain and eat it but if he hulls it and lays the grains in his hand he is liable to give tithe said our Eliezer and it is likewise with respect to the Sabbath but this is not so for Rab's wife hulled for him cupfuls and likewise our high's wife hulled cupfuls for him rather if the statement of our Eliezer has been said it was said with respect to the second clause he who rubs ears of wheat may winnow them from one hand to the other and eat them without tithing. But if he windows them and lays them on his lap, he is liable, said our Eliezer, and it is likewise with respect to the Sabbath. Our Abba be mammal demur to this end. In the first clause, is he liable in respect to tithe, but not in respect to Sabbath? Is there then any action which with respect to the Sabbath does not rank as the final act, whereas with respect to tithe it is regarded as the final act to this? Arshis hate the son of our Edi Is there not surely there is a case of what constitutes their threshing floor in respect of tithing? For we have learned when is their harvesting time for tithing in the case of cucumbers and gourds after their coils of blossom have dropped, and if they have not dropped, then as soon as they have been made a heap, and we learned likewise of onions, they are liable for tithing as soon as he their owner sets up a heap. Yet with respect to the Sabbath, the setting up of a heap does not involve culpability, therefore you must need say that with Respect to the Sabbath, the Torah forbade work of craftsmanship. So also here say the Torah forbade work of craftsmanship. How should one rub them? Abay in the name of our Joseph says one finger against one finger, but are we in the name of our Joseph says one finger against two fingers? Rabbi, however, says so long as he does it in an unusual way, it is permitted even between the thumb and all the fingers. How should one window them on a Sabbath? Said our Abay in the name of Rabbi. Should window Talmud, Moss bites out from the joints of the fingers upwards. They are added in the west. So long as he does it in an unusual manner, it is permitted to be done even with the whole palm. But said our Eliezer, he should window vigorously with one hand. Mishnah Beth Shammai say spices may be pounded with a wooden pestle and salt in a small cruise or with a wooden ladle. But Beth Hillel maintains spices may be pounded after their usual fashion with a stone pestle and salt with a wooden. Pestle Gemara all agree at any rate that the pounding of salt must be done in an unusual manner. What is the reason Arhuna and Arhista differ? One says because all dishes require salt, but not all dishes require spices, and the other says because all spices lose their flavor, but salt does not lose its flavor. Wherein do they differ? The difference between them is when he knew on the eve of the festival what dish he will cook on the morrow, or in the case of saffron, Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel, everything which is pounded may be pounded in the usual way, even salt, but surely you have said that salt must be pounded in an unusual way. He rules as the following tenet for it was taught. Our Meir says Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ over commodities which are pounded, agreeing that they may be pounded in the usual way, and salt with them they differ only with respect to pounding it salt alone. When Beth Shammai say salt may be pounded in a small cruise and with a wooden ladle only for roasting but not for boiling and Beth Hillel maintained it may be pounded with everything with everything can you think so say rather for everything or Ahab Ardella said to his son when you pound salt incline the mortar sideways and pound Arshis he heard the sound of a mortar and pestle and said he this is not coming from my house perhaps it was done sideways he heard a shrill noise perhaps it was spices spices produce a dull sound our rabbis taught one may not prepare pearl barley nor pound anything in a mortar you state two contradictory rulings this is what it means to say what is the reason that you may not prepare pearl barley because you may not pound anything in a mortar then it should have only stated one may not pound anything in a mortar if it stated only one may not pound anything in a mortar I would say that is only in a big mortar but in the case of a small mortar I would say it is well so it informs us that this is not so, but it was taught one may not pound in a big mortar, but one may pound in a small mortar. Said Abay when the teaching was taught, it too was taught of a large mortar. Talmud, Moss bites of B. Talmud, Moss bites of B. Rabba says there is no difficulty. This Beretha refers to us, and the other Beretha refers to them. Our Papa visited Mar Samuel. They set before him pearl barley broth, and he did not eat of it. Perhaps they prepared it in a small mortar. He noticed that it was very fine. Perhaps they prepared it the day before the festival. He saw that it, the pearl barley was still bearing the polish from the husking. Or you can say it is different in the case of the house of Mar Samuel on account of the laxity of the servant's mission. If one selects pulse out a festival, Beth Shammai say he must select the edible parts and eat them forthwith. But Beth Hillel say he may pick out as usual from a small quantity in his lap or in a basket or in a dish, but not onto a board or in a Sifter or in a seed, Rabban Gamaliel says he may even rinse them in water and skim off the refuse. Gemara, it was taught Rabban Gamaliel said this was only stated when the edible part is more than the refuse, but if the refuse is more than the edible part, all agree that he must pick out the edible part and leave the refuse. If the refuse is more than the edible part, is there anyone who permits it to be picked? This refers to a case where the work of picking out the refuse is great, though. The quantity of the refuse is small. Rabban Gamaliel says he may even rinse them and skim off the refuse. It was taught our Eliezer son of Arzadik said this was the practice in the house of Rabban Gamaliel. They brought a bucket full of lentils and poured water over them with the result that that which was edible remained below and the refuse floated on top, but has not the opposite been taught. There is no contradiction. The one applies to sand, the other applies to chaff. Mishnah Shammai. Say one may send gifts to a neighbor on a festival only portions ready for eating but Beth Hillel say one may send cattle game and poultry whether alive or slaughtered one may also send wine oil flour or pulse but not grain but our Simeon permits also grain Gamara RG Hyle taught provided that he does not send it the present by a company of men taught a company consists of not less than three persons Arashi put the question what is the law with respect to three persons with three varieties of gifts this question is undecided our Simeon permits also grain it was taught our Simeon allows grain e.g. wheat to prepare their food for gladiators barley to give to his cattle and lentils to prepare their growth mission one may send clothes whether sewn up or not yet sewn up even though there is kilim in them provided they are necessary for the F E festival but one may not send hobnailed sandals nor unstitched shoes our Judah says not even white shoes because they Still require an artisan to blacken them. This is the general rule. Whatever may be
Money purses nor seed bags are subject to the law of Kilayim because it is not the usual practice to warm oneself with these but not hobnailed sandals. What is the reason that hobnailed sandals may not be sent because of the incident that occurred? Ava said hobnailed sandals may not be worn during a festival but they may be handled. They may not be worn on account of the incident that happened but they may be handled since it teaches one may not send for if you maintain that it is. Forbidden to handle now if it is forbidden to handle need sending be taught nor unstitched choose this is obvious it is necessary even when it is fastened with wooden pins Arjuda says not even white choose it was taught Arjuda permits black sandals and forbids white because they still require a cloth containing silicate of iron Arjose forbids black sandals because they still require to be smoothed and they do not differ the one master ruling according to his district and the other. Master according to his district in the district of the one master the sandal was finished with the flesh side of the leather inside and in the district of the other master they finished the sandals with the flesh side outwards this is the general rule whatever may be used on a festival Arshis hate permitted scholars to send tefillin on a festival Abbe said to him but we have learned whatever may be used on a festival may he sent this is what he means to say whatever one uses on a Weekday may be sent on a festival. Abbe said, since we are now dealing with Tefillin, we would say something thereon. If one was on his way home wearing Tefillin on his head and the sun was setting upon him, he should place his hand upon them until he reaches his house. If he was sitting in the academy with Tefillin on his head and the holiness of the day the Sabbath came and then he must place his hand upon them until he reaches his house. Arhuna, the son of Rika, raised an objection. If one was on his way home with Tefillin on his head and the holiness of the day the Sabbath came and then he must place his hand upon them until he reaches a house situated near the wall of the city. If he was sitting in the academy with Tefillin on his head and the holiness of the day came and he must place his hand upon them until he reaches the house nearest to the academy, there is no contradiction. The one treats of a case when it the house is guarded, the other when it is not guarded. If it is not guarded then why particularly on his head even if the tefillin were found lying on the ground he should also be allowed to carry them to this house for we have learned he who finds tefillin on a sabbath may bring them in and peers this is no difficulty the one treats of a case when it is guarded against thieves and against dogs the other when it is guarded against dogs but it is not guarded against thieves you might think that the majority of robbers in that district are Israelites who would not handle them disrespectfully hence he informs us that it is not so Talmud Moss bites of B-C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I I mission if a festival fell on the eve of sabbath one may not at the outset cook on the festival for the sabbath but he may cook for the festival and if any is left over it remains for the sabbath and he may prepare a dish on the eve of the festival and rely upon it to prepare food for the sabbath Beth Shammai say two dishes are required for this purpose. While Beth Hillel say one dish yet they both agree that a fish and an egg upon it are considered as two dishes if he ate it or it was lost he may not in the first place cook in reliance on it but if he left over any small portion of it he may rely on it to cook for the Sabbath tomorrow whence do we know the said Samuel because the scripture says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy remember it in view of another festival which comes to make it forgotten what is the reason for the institution of the Arab said Rabbah in order that he may choose a fine portion for the Sabbath and a fine portion for the festival are as he said in order that people might say you may not bake on a festival for the Sabbath how much the more is it forbidden on a festival for a weekday we have learned he may prepare a dish on the eve of the festival and rely upon it to prepare food for the Sabbath it is well according to our Ashi who says in order that people might say you may not bake on a Festival for the Sabbath, etc. Hence it is only on the eve of the festival, but not on the festival, but according to Rabbah, why particularly on the eve of the festival, even on the festival itself, too, let it be permitted, it is even so, but it is a preventive decree, lest he be negligent. Now, Atana deduces it from the following bake that which ye will bake and see that which ye will see from this. Our Eliezer concluded that you may bake only independence upon what is already baked, and you may cook only independence upon what is already cooked. Here in the sages found a biblical support for Arab Tapshalim. Our rabbis taught it happened that our Eliezer was once sitting and lecturing the whole day of the festival on festival laws. When the first group left the lecture hall, he said, These are people of butts. When the second group left, he said, These are people of casks. When the third group left, he said, These are people of pitchers. When the fourth group left, he Said these are people of flasks when the fifth group left he said these are people of beakers when the sixth group began to go out he said these are the people of the curse he cast his eyes at his disciples and their faces began to change whereupon he said to them my sons not of you said I this but of those who have gone out who put aside life eternal and occupy themselves with the life temporal or ephemeral when they were taking their leave he said to them go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto him for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our lord neither be aggrieved for the joy of the lord is your strength stronghold the master said who put aside life eternal and occupy themselves with the life temporal but the enjoyment of the festival is a religious duty our Eliezer is consistent with his own view for he said rejoicing on the festival is optional for it was taught our Eliezer says on a festival a man has not to do save Either eat and drink or sit and learn our Joshua says divided half of it for the Lord and half of it for yourselves are you had and said both through their inference from the same scripture verse s one verse states a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God and another verse reads ye shall have a solemn assembly how is this to be reconciled our Eliza is of the opinion either the whole of it is for the Lord or the whole of it is for yourselves while our Joshua is of the opinion divided half of it is for the Lord and half of it is for yourselves what means for whom nothing is prepared are his said for him who did not set i.e. prepare an Arab tapulin others say he who had not the opportunity to set an Arab tapulin but he who had the opportunity to set an Arab tapulin and did not set is a transgressor what means for the joy of the Lord is your strength are you had and said in the name of our Eliezer son of our Simeon the Holy One blessed be he said unto Israel my children borrow on my account and Celebrate the holiness of the day and trust in me and I will pay our Yohan and further said in the name of our Eliezer son of our Simeon he who desires his property to be preserved for him should plant therein a for it says the Lord on high is mighty alternatively Adara implies what its name indicates for people say why is it called Adara because it lasts from generation to generation it was similarly taught a field in which there is an Adara can neither be robbed nor forcibly purchased and its fruits are protected our Talafah the brother of Rabbanah because he learned Talmud Moss bites out the entire sustenance of man for the year is fixed for him from New Year's festival to the day of atonement except the expenditure for Sabbaths and the expenditure for festivals and the expenditure for the instruction of his children in the law if he spent less for any of these he is given less and if he spent more he is given more said Arabah what verse of scripture supports this blow the horn at the new moon at the full moon for our feast day which is a festival on which the moon is concealed say it is new year and it is written with respect to this festival for it is a statute hak for Israel an ordinance of the God of Jacob how is it implied that the word hak connotes sustenance for it is written and did eat their portion hakam which Pharaoh gave them Marzitra says it is inferred from here feed me with mine allotted haki bread it was taught they related concerning Shammai the elder that all his life he ate in honor of the Sabbath thus if he found a well favored animal he said let this be for the Sabbath if afterwards he found one better favored he put aside the second for the Sabbath and ate the first but Hillel the elder had a different trait for all his works were for the sake of heaven for it is said blessed be the Lord day by day it was likewise taught that Shammai say from the first day of the week prepare for the Sabbath, but Bethel said, Blessed be the Lord day by day. Our Hamabi Hanan said, He who makes a gift to his neighbor need not inform him, for it says, And Moses knew not that the skin of his face sent forth beams. An objection was raised that Yemen, know I am the Lord who sanctify you, the Holy One. Blessed be he said unto Moses, Moses, I have a precious gift in my treasury, and its name is Sabbath, and I wish to give it to Israel. Go and tell them, hence our Simeon be Gamaliel said, He who gives a child a piece of bread must inform his mother. There is no difficulty. The one treats of a gift which will naturally become known, and the other treats of a gift which does not naturally become known, but the Sabbath too is a gift which would have naturally become known. Its reward would not naturally be known. The master said, Hence our Simeon be Gamaliel
is common whereas pearl barley broth is not common others teach have said they taught this only of a dish but not a bread what is the reason if I were to say something which is not common is required whereas bread is common and what a pearl barley broth which is also not common and yet our Naomi Bezakaria said in the name of Abbe one may not set an Arab with pearl barley broth rather something used as a relish is required and bread is not used as a relish and pearl barley broth too is not used as a relish for our Zara said these Babylonians are fools for they eat bread with bread our high taught the lentils at the bottom of the pot can be relied upon as an Arab tapulin providing that they amount to as much as an olive our Isaac son of Rab Judah said one may scrape off the fat which is upon the knife and rely upon it as an Arab tapulin providing that it amounts to as much as an olive our C said in the name of Rab small salted fish are not subject to the interdict against the cooking of a heathen are Joseph said and if a heathen grilled them one may rely upon them as or for an Arab tapulin but if a heathen made them into a pie of fish hash it is prohibited this is obvious you might think Talmud Moss bites a bee that the fish hash is the principal element hence he informs us that the flour is the principal element our Abba said an Arab tapulin must be the size of all olive the scholars ask does that mean one olive for all the participants together or an Olive for each one separately come and here for our Abba said in the name of Rabban Arab Tapshalin requires to be the size of an olive whether for one or for one hundred we have learned if he ate it or it was lost he may not in the first place cook in reliance on it but if he left over any small portion of it he may rely on it to cook for the Sabbath what does any small portion mean does it not mean although it is not as much as an olive no when it is as much as an olive come and here. This dish can be grilled or pickled or stewed or boiled and the Spanish coleus can be used when he had poured hot water over it on the eve of the festival for its commencement and its end there is no standard in quantity does it not surely mean there is no standard fixed at all no there is no upper i.e. maximum standard but there is a downwards i.e. minimum standard Arhuna said in the name of Rabbi Arab Tapshalin requires cognizance it is certain that the cognizance of him who Deposits the dish is required, but do we require the cognizance of him for whom it is deposited, or do we not require it? Come and here for the father of Samuel used to set the Arab for the whole of Nehardi RMI and RC used to set the Arab for the whole of Tiberius R Jacob B E D proclaimed he who has not set an Arab tapulin let him come and rely upon mine and how far our Naomi Bezakaria said in the name of Abay as far as the Sabbath limit there was a certain blind man who used to recite Barithas in the presence of Mar Samuel when he noticed that he was gloomy he asked him why are you gloomy because I have not set an Arab tapulin replied he then rely upon mine he rejoined the following year he again noticed that he was gloomy said he to him why are you gloomy he answered him because I have not set all Arab tapulin then said he to him you are a transgressor to everybody else it is permitted but to you it is forbidden our rabbis taught if a festival falls on it. Eve of Sabbath one may neither set on the festival a boundary Arab nor an Arab of courts Rabbi says one may set a court Arab but not a boundary Arab for you can forbid him what is forbidden to him on a festival but you cannot forbid him what is allowed to him on a festival it was stated Rab says the Halachah is as the first ten and Samuel says the Halachah is as Rabbi the scholars asked is the Halachah is Rabbi meant leniently or stringently of course he Samuel meant it leniently. The question was raised because our Eliezer sent word to the diaspora to would not as you teach in Babylon that Rabbi permits and the sages forbid but rather Rabbi forbids and the sages permit how is it now come and here for our Talafabi of Demi decided a case according to Samuel and Rab remarked thereon the first decision of this young scholar is harmful now if you say that he Samuel meant his teaching to be lenient it is well hence this is harmful but if you say he meant stringently. What harmful teaching is there since many come to error Talmud, Moss bites out this is harm Rabbi said in Arhistah's name who said in the name of Arhuna the Halashah is as Rabbi is that it is forbidden our Rabbis taught if a festival fell on a Sabbath Beth Shammai say he must pray eight benedictions and recite the benediction of the Sabbath separately and of the festival separately but Beth Hillel say he must pray seven benedictions beginning with the Sabbath formula and ending with the Sabbath formula and he makes mention of the holiness of the day in the middle Rabbi says he should also conclude it the benediction who sanctifieth the Sabbath Israel and the seasons of Tanah recited in the presence of Rabbi who sanctifieth Israel and the Sabbath and the seasons he said to him does then Israel sanctify the Sabbath the Sabbath has already been sanctified from the creation and so continue say rather who sanctifieth the Sabbath Israel and the seasons are Joseph said it. Halachah is as Rabbi and as Rabbana explained that our Rabbis taught if a Sabbath falls on a new moon or on the intermediate days of a festival at the evening morning and afternoon services he prays seven benedictions and makes mention of the nature of the day in the Abodah and if he did not recite it he is made to turn back our Eliezer says he alludes to the day in the Thanksgiving benediction while in the additional services he begins with the Sabbath formula and closes with the Sabbath formula and makes mention of the holiness of the day in the middle our Simeon be Gamaliel and our Ishmael son of our Yohanan be Barakah say whenever one is obliged to say seven benedictions he begins with the Sabbath formula and closes with the Sabbath formula and mentions the holiness of the day in the middle said Arhuna the Halachah is not as that pair of scholars are high B Ashi and Rab's name said a man may prepare a boundary Arab on the first day of a festival for the second and stipulate Rabbah. Said a man may prepare an Arab tapulin on the first day of a festival for the second and stipulate he who states a boundary Arab all the more an Arab tapulin while he who states an Arab tapulin but not a boundary Arab what is the reason because one may not acquire a Sabbath residence on a Sabbath or rabbis taught one may not bake on the first day of a festival for the second in truth they said a woman may fill the whole pot with meat although she only needs one portion a baker may fill a barrel with water although he only needs one handful but as for baking he may bake only what he needs our Simeon B. Eliezer says a housewife may fill the entire oven with loaves because bread is baked better in a full oven said Rabbi the Halachah says our Simeon B. Eliezer the scholars asked he who did not set an Arab tapulin is he forbidden to bake for the Sabbath and likewise his flour is forbidden or perhaps only he is forbidden but his flour is not forbidden what is the practical Difference whether he must give up his flower to others if you say that both he is forbidden and likewise his flower is forbidden then he must give his flower to others but if you say he is forbidden but his flower is not forbidden then he need not give up his flower to others what is the law come and here he who has not set an Arab tapulin may neither bake nor cook nor store food away neither for himself nor for others nor may others bake or cook for him what should he do he gives up his flower to others and these bake and cook for him conclude therefrom that he is forbidden and likewise his flower is forbidden it is thus concluded the scholars ask what if he transgressed and bake come and here he who has not set an Arab tapulin what is he to do he gives up his flower to others and these others bake and cook for him Talmud Moss bites be now if there is this possibility let him state if he transgressed and baked it is permissible said our Adabi Matina the Tana. Teaches a legal remedy and a legal remedy he does not teach come and here he who has set an Arab tapulin may bake and cook and store and if he wishes to eat his Arab he is at liberty to do so if he ate at the Arab before he had baked or before he had stored then he may not bake nor cook nor store away neither for himself nor for others nor may others bake or cook for him but he may cook for the festival and if he leaves anything he has left it for the Sabbath provided that he does not intentionally resort to an artifice and if he has resorted to all artifice it is forbidden said Arashi you speak of all artifice and artifice is different for the rabbis have treated it more rigorously than an intentional transgression Arnam and B. Isaac says this represents the opinion of Hanani and according to Beth Shammai for it was taught Hanani says that Beth Shammai maintain one may bake only if he set an Arab of bread and one may cook only if he set an Arab of cooked food and one may Store only if he had already warm water stored on the eve of the festival, but Beth Hillel affirm one may set an Arab with one dish and prepare all his requirement in reliance thereon. Come and here he who tithed his fruits on the Sabbath. If he acted in error, he may eat of them. If deliberately he may not eat of them. The streets of a case where he has other fruits come and here. If one purified his unclean vessels on the Sabbath, if in error he
Intention to another or from one company to another Gemara all incidentally agree that a vessel may not be immersed on a Sabbath. What is the reason? Said Rabbah, it is a preventative measure. Talmud, Moss bites out lest he take it in his hand and carry it four cubits in a public ground. Abe said to him, How is it to be explained when there is a pit in his courtyard? He answered him, A pit in his courtyard is preventively forbidden on account of a pit in public ground. This is well with respect to Sabbath, but with respect to festivals, how is it to be explained? They forbade it on festivals on account of the Sabbath. Do we then preventively forbid? Surely we have learned they agree that on a festival one may affect surface contact for unclean water in a stone vessel, but one may not immerse it. And if this is so, let us forbid surface contact on account of immersion. Now is that logical? If he has other clean water, then why affect surface contact for this water? Therefore, this. Treats of a case where he has no other clean water, and since he has no other clean water, he will be very careful with it. He raised an objection to him. One may draw water with a ritually unclean bucket, and if the bucket becomes clean now, if it is so, let us preventively forbid lest he come to immerse it by itself. It is different there, since he is permitted to immerse it by means of drawing water only. He will remember he raised an objection to him. A vessel which became defiled on the eve of a festival, one may not immerse it on the festival. If it became defiled on the festival, one may immerse it on the festival now. If it is so, let us forbid that which became defiled on the festival on account of that which became defiled on the eve of the festival. Defilement on a festival is a rare occurrence, and with regard to a thing of rare occurrence, the rabbis did not enact a preventative measure. He raised an objection to him. A vessel which became defiled through a father of Uncleanness one may not immerse it on a festival, but if it became defiled through a derivative uncleanness, one may immerse it on a festival. Now, if it is so, let us forbid one because of the other. How is a derivative uncleanness possible only in the case of priests? And priests are careful. Come and here for our high B. As she said in Rab's name, Anita, who has no ritually clean clothes, may use guile and immerse herself in her clothes. Now, if it is so, let us forbid this, lest she come to immerse her clothes by themselves. It is different there since it is permitted to her only in her clothes. She will remember. Our Joseph says it is a preventive measure on account of wringing the clothes. Said Abay to him, this is well with respect to apparel which can be wrung, but with respect to vessels which cannot be wrung, what is there to be said? He replied to Hanai, these have been forbidden on account of those he raised all the above mentioned objections, and he answered him and said. As we have answered, RBB says it is a preventive measure lest he delay. It was taught as RBB a vessel which became defiled on the eve of the festival. One may not immerse it on the festival lest he delay. Rabbah says the immersion of vessels is forbidden because it looks like repairing the vessel. If it is so, a man too should likewise be forbidden. In the case of a man, it looks as if he were cooling himself. This is well in the case of clear water. But what will you say with respect to turbid water? Said Arnaman B. Isaac, it happens that one comes home Talmud, moss bites a bee in hot weather and bathes even in water used for soaking dirty linen. This is well in summer. What will you say of winter? Arnaman B. Isaac replied, a man sometimes returns home from the field besmeared with mud and filth and bathes even in winter. This is well on a Sabbath, but on the day of atonement, what is there to be said? Said Rabbah, is there then anything which on a Sabbath is permitted and on it? Day of atonement is forbidden, but since it bathing is permitted on the Sabbath, it is also permitted on the day of atonement. Does then Rabbah accept the argument of since surely we have learned he who has toothache must not rinse them with vinegar on the Sabbath, but he may dip his food in vinegar in his usual manner, and if it becomes better, it becomes better. And we pointed out a contradiction: he must not rinse and expectorate, but he may rinse and swallow. And Abay answered when we learned our mission, we learned it also as referring to rinsing and expectorating. Rabbah, however, answered, you may even say the mission refers to rinsing and swallowing, and still there is no contradiction. In the one case, it means before the dipping of the food into the vinegar, and in the other case, it means after the dipping of the food in the vinegar. Now, if it is so, let us say since it is permitted before the meal, it is also permitted after the meal. Rabbah retracted from that statement. How do? You know that he retracted from that statement. Perhaps he changed his mind with respect to the present one. You cannot suppose this, for it was taught everyone who is required to take a ritual bath may bathe in the usual way, both on the fast of the ninth of and on the day of atonement. But they both agree that on a festival you may affect surface contact for unclean water in a stone vessel, etc. What does but one may not immerse it mean? Said Samuel, one may not on a festival immerse the unclean vessel on account of its water in order to cleanse it. Who is the author of our mission? It is neither rabbi nor the sages, for it was taught one may not immerse the unclean vessel on account of its water in order to cleanse it, nor may one affect surface contact or unclean water in a stone vessel in order to cleanse it. This is the opinion of rabbi, but the sages say one may immerse the vessel on account of its water in order to cleanse it, and one may affect surface contact for. Unclean water in a stone vessel in order to cleanse it who now is the author of our mission if rabbi the ruling on surface contact is a difficulty if the sages the ruling on immersion is a difficulty if you like I can say the author of the mission is rabbi alternatively it is the sages if you like I can say it is rabbi the first clause of the very the concerns festivals and the concluding clause concerns the sabbath whereas the whole of our mission deals with festivals talmud mas bites alternatively I can say it is the sages and the whole of our mission deals with the sabbath our rabbis taught a vessel which became defiled on the eve of a festival one may not immerse at twilight our simian jizuri says even on a weekday one may not immerse it then because it requires waiting until sunset and does not the first tanner require waiting until sunset said rabbi I found the disciples of the academy who sat and said they differ whether his intention is to be recognized from his acts how so if for example he is holding a vessel in his hand and running along about twilight time to immerse it one master is of the opinion that the reason he is running along is that he indeed knows that he requires to wait until sunset and the other master is of the opinion that he is running on account of his work and said I to them none dispute that his intention is recognized from his acts they differ only when another vessel became defiled through part of a reptile less than the size of a lentil and he came before the rabbis to ask whether having come into contact with part of a reptile less than the size of a lentil it has become defiled or not one master is of the opinion since he does not know this he also does not know that and the other master is of the opinion this only he does not know but with the requirement of sunset he is well acquainted and one may immerse to change from one intention to another our rabbis taught how is from one Intention to another meant he who wishes to make his wine press out of his olive press or his olive press out of his wine press may do so what means from one company to another if he intended to eat with one company and now wishes to eat with another company he may do so Mishnah Beth Sham I say one may bring peace offerings on festivals but may not lay hands thereon but one may not bring burnt offerings on a festival but Beth Hillel maintain one may bring peace offerings and burnt offerings and also lay hands thereon Gemara Ola said the dispute is only with respect to the laying on of hands on festival peace offerings and the sacrificing of the pilgrimage burnt offerings when Beth Sham I hold and ye shall keep we got them at a feast hag unto the Lord implies only festival peace offerings hag but not the pilgrimage burnt offerings and Beth Hillel maintain unto the Lord implies all sacrifices offered unto the Lord but all agree that vows and free will. Offerings may not be offered on a festival and thus did our Adabi Ahabah say vows and free will offerings may not be offered on a festival and objection was raised our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ concerning a burnt offering which is not for the festival both agreeing that it may not be offered on a festival and concerning peace offerings of the festival that they may be offered on the festival they only differ concerning a burnt offering which is for the festival and concerning peace offerings which are not for the festival when Beth Shammai say he may not bring them and Beth Hillel maintain he may bring them reconcile it by saying thus our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ concerning a burnt offering or peace offering which are not connected with the festival that they may not be offered on the festival and concerning peace offerings connected with the festival that they may be offered on the festival day. Differ only concerning a burnt offering connected with the festival when Beth Shammai say he may not bring it and Beth Hillel maintain he may bring it or Joseph said you quote Tanaim at random there is a disp
Obligation in respect of the joy of the festival but does not fulfill his obligation there within respect of the festival sacrifices the master said one may not bring a thank offering on the feast of unleavened bread on account of the leaven which it contains this is obvious said our son of our Isaac some say our Samuel B. Abba we are treating here of the 14th of Nisan and he holds you must not bring consecrated meat to the place of disqualification nor on Pentecost because it is a festival he is of the opinion that vows and free will offerings may not be offered on a festival but a man may bring his thank offering on the feast of tabernacles when if it should mean on the festival itself but you say nor on Pentecost because it is a festival therefore it must mean on the intermediary days of the festival our Simeon says low scripture says on the feast of unleavened bread and on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles teaching whatever may be brought on the Feast of unleavened bread may also be brought on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles, and what may not be brought on the feast of unleavened bread may also not be brought on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles. To this are Zerah seeing that we may even gather fire. Would can there be a question about vows and free will offering? Said Abbe, none dispute that the offering of the thank offering is permitted. They differ only as to whether he is subject to thou. Shalt not delay on its account. The first Tana holds the divine law said three festivals, even not in their order of sequence. While our Simeon is of the opinion only in their order of sequence, he transgresses, but not when they are not in order of sequence. Our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, says one may bring the thank offering on the feast of tabernacles when if it means on the intermediary days of the festival, then it is the same as the first Tana. Therefore, it means on the festival itself, and he. Is of the opinion that vows or free will offerings may be offered on festivals, and why does he teach this particularly of the Feast of Tabernacles? Our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, follows his view expressed elsewhere, for it was taught our Simeon says scripture need not have mentioned the Feast of Tabernacles for the passages dealing with it. Why then is it mentioned to teach that this is the last? Our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, says to teach that this festival of tabernacles alone brings it about end. May therewith fulfill his obligation concerning the joy of the festival, but does not fulfill his obligation therewith concerning the festival sacrifices. This is obvious, for this is indeed an obligatory sacrifice, and any obligatory sacrifice can only be brought of unconsecrated animals or money. It is necessary to teach this, even if he explicitly stipulated as our Simeon Belagish asked, Are you and what if one said, I vow a thank offering that I may therewith fulfill my obligation of Hajigagora? Take upon myself to become a Nazi right Talmud, Moss by today on condition that I shave with the second tithe money he replied to him he is under a vow but he cannot discharge his Hajjah obligation therewith he is a Nazi right but he cannot shave as he stipulated a certain man declared give 400 zoos to so and so and let him marry my daughter our papa said the 400 zoos he receives and as for the daughter if he wishes he may marry her and if he wishes he need not marry her. The reason is because he said give him and he shall marry but if he had said let him marry and give him then if he marries her he receives the money but if he does not marry her he does not receive it Mirmar was sitting and stated this ruling in his own name said Robin to Mirmar you are teaching this thus but we teach it as a question directed by Rush Lakish to our Yohan and Atana recited before our Isaac B. Abba and he presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the Ordinance, i.e., according to the ordinance of a free will burnt offering, this teaches that the obligatory burnt offering requires laying on of hands. Said he to him, he who told you this did so in accordance with Beth Shammai, who do not learn obligatory peace offerings from free will peace offerings, for it is according to Beth Hillel, since they learn obligatory peace offerings from free will peace offerings, the obligatory burnt offering too does not require a scripture text for the infer it from the free will burnt offering. But once do you know that Beth Hillel learned obligatory peace offerings from free will peace offerings, perhaps they learn it from the obligatory burnt offering, while the obligatory burnt offering itself requires a scripture text, why would you say that they do not infer it from free will peace offerings because they are frequent, then they could not infer it from an obligatory burnt offering either, since it is wholly consumed, it is inferred from both of them, but does. Beth Shammai maintained that obligatory peace offerings do not require the laying on of hands. Surely it was taught our Joseph said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ about the laying on of hands itself, both agreeing that it is necessary they dispute only whether the act of slaughtering must immediately follow the laying on of hands when Beth Shammai hold it is not necessary and Beth Hillel maintained it is necessary he teaches according to the following tenet for it was taught our Jose son. Of our Judah said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ that the slaughtering must immediately follow the laying on of hands they dispute only about the laying on of hands itself Beth Shammai ruling it is not necessary while Beth Hillel maintained it is necessary our rabbis taught it once happened that Hillel the elder brought his burnt offering into the temple court on a festival for the purpose of laying hands thereon the disciples of Shammai the elder gathered around him and asked what is the nature of this animal he replied to them it is a female and I brought it as a peace offering thereupon he swung its tail for them and they went away on that day Beth Shammai got the upper hand over Beth Hillel and wished to fix the Halacha according to their ruling but an old man of the disciples of Shammai the elder was there named Baba Bibuta who knew that the Halacha is as Beth Hillel and he sent Talmud, Moss by Zabi and fetched all the sheep of Kedar that were in Jerusalem and put them into the temple court and said whoever wishes to lay on hands let him come and lay on hands and on that day Beth Hillel got the upper hand and established the Halacha according to their opinion and there was no one there who disputed it it happened again with a certain disciple of the disciples of Beth Hillel who brought his burnt offering into the temple court for the purpose of laying hands there on a certain disciple of the disciples of Beth Shammai found him and said to him why the Laying on of hands he replied why not keep silence he silenced him with a rebuke and he went away said Abbe therefore a young scholar to whom his colleague says anything should not answer back more than the former had spoken to him for the one said to the other why the laying on of hands and the other replied correspondingly why not keep silence it was taught Beth Hillel said to Beth Shammai if when it is forbidden to slaughter to provide food for a layman it is permitted to slaughter. For the most high then where it is permitted on behalf of a layman it is surely logical that it is permitted for the most high Beth Shammai replied to them let vows and free will offerings prove the contrary for they are permitted for a layman and yet forbidden for the most high Beth Hillel said to them as for vows and free will offerings that is because there is no fixed time for them will you say the same with respect to a pilgrimage burnt offering seeing that it has a fixed time Beth. Shammai replied to them even for the sacrifice there is no strictly fixed time for we have learned he who did not bring his festival offering on the first day of the festival may bring it during the whole of the remaining days of the festival even on the last day Beth Hillel replied to them even for this there is indeed a time fixed for we have learned if the festival passes and he has not brought his festival offering he bears no further liability on its account Beth Shammai said to them surely it is said that only may be done for you implying but not for the most high God Beth Hillel replied to them surely it is said and ye shall keep it as a feast unto the Lord implying whatever is for the Lord if so why then does the text say for you for you but not for heathens for you but not for dogs Abbas all taught the same in another form if when thy hearth is closed the hearth of the master is open how much the more must the hearth of thy master be open when thy hearth is Open and that is logical that thy table should not be full and the table of thy master empty and what do they differ one master holds vows and free will offerings may be offered on a festival and the other master holds they may not be offered on a festival are who not said on the view that vows and free will offerings may not be offered on a festival say not biblically they are indeed permitted and only the rabbis preventively forbade them lest one delay but even biblically they are not permitted for the two loaves of bread which are obligatory for that day so that we need not apprehend delay yet their preparation does not override either the sabbath or a festival the scholars asked on the view that vows and free will offerings may not be offered on a festival what is the law if one transgressed and did slaughter rabbi says he sprinkles the blood in order to permit the flesh to be eaten for food rabbi son of Arhuna says he sprinkles the blood in order to burn their inwards at even tide what Difference is there between them they differ when the flesh was defiled or lost according to Rabbah he must not sprinkle the blood according to Rabbah son of Arhuna he does sprin
Really the reason an animal half of which belongs to a heathen and half to an Israelite may be slaughtered on a festival because it is impossible to eat as much as an olive of flesh without slaughtering but vows and free will offerings may not be slaughtered on a festival because when the priests receive their portion they receive it from the table of the Most High Arhist said an animal half of which belongs to a heathen and half to an Israelite is permitted to be slaughtered on a festival. Because as much as an olive of flesh is unattainable without slaughtering but dough belonging half to a heathen and half to an Israelite may not be baked on a festival for it is possible to divide it at the needing our hand of Yehanel raised an objection dogs dough if the shepherds eat of it is subject to hell and one may prepare an Arab there with effect the partnership there with pronounce a blessing over it and say grace after it and it may be baked on a festival and a man can fulfill his obligation there with on Passover but why may it be baked on a festival surely it is possible for him to divide it during the needing dogs dough is different since it is possible to appease them the dogs with carrion does and Arhista accept the argument of since surely it was stated he who bakes on a festival for the weekday Arhista says he is flagellated whereas Rabbo maintains he is not flagellated Arhista says he is flagellated for we do not say since if visitors came to him it is Fit for him on the festival it is even now considered fit for him Rabbi maintains he is not flagellated for we do maintain the argument of since rather do not say since it is possible etc but when for example he the shepherd has a carcass so that it is definitely possible to satisfy them the dogs there with they asked of our may the Jewish inhabitants of the valley who are obliged to supply bread for the troops make it on a festival he replied to them we see if they can give some bread thereof to a child and they the soldiers do not object then every loaf is fit for a child hence it is permitted but if not it is forbidden but surely it was taught it once happened that Simeon the Temanite did not come to the academy on the eve of the festival in the morning Judah B. Baba found him and asked why did you not attend yesterday evening at the academy he replied to him a troop of soldiers came into our town and wished to plunder the entire city so we killed a calf for them and fed them and let them depart in peace said Judah to him I should be surprised if your gain is not counterbalanced by your loss for surely the Torah said for you but not for heathens but why so the calf was fit to be eaten by them said our Joseph it was a trefa calf but it was fit for dogs tanaim differ on this for it was taught save that which every soul must eat that only may be done by you from the implication of the expression every soul I might assume also that the soul of cattle is included as it is said and he that smite the soul of a beast mortally shall make it good the text therefore says for you Talmud Moss bites be intimating but not for dogs this is the opinion of our Jose the Galilean our Akiva says even the soul of cattle is included if so then why does the text say for you for you but not for heathens and what reason do you see to include dogs and to exclude heathens I include dogs since you are responsible for their food and I exclude Heathens because you are not responsible for their food have they said to our Joseph now according to our Jose the Galilean who says for you but not for dogs how can we throw date stones as fodder to cattle on a festival said he to him because they are fit for fuel this is well when they are dry but how is it to be explained when they are moist they are fit for a big fire this is well on a festival but what will you say with respect to the Sabbath we may handle them in virtue of bread in accordance with Samuel for Samuel said a man may do all he needs in virtue of bread but he disagrees with our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said one may invite a heathen to a meal on a Sabbath but one may not invite a heathen on a festival as a preventive measure lest he may cook more on his a heathen's account our Ahabi Jacob says not even on a Sabbath on account of what is left at the bottom of the cups if so even the remains of our own wine to ours is fit for fowls there's too. Is fit for fowls, theirs is forbidden for any use, let him remove them in virtue of the cups. Did not Rabbi say you may remove the brazier on account of the ashes, although it contains fragments of wood there, they are not prohibited for use, but here they are prohibited for use. Our Ahabi Dipti said to Rabbi, let it be like a vessel for excrement. He answered him, May we make excrement at the outset? Rabbi accompanied Mar Samuel, who lectured one may invite a heathen to a meal on a Sabbath, but one may not invite a heathen on a festival as a preventive measure, lest he will cook more on his account. When a heathen visited Mirmar and Marzitra on a festival, they would say to him, If you are content with that which we have prepared for ourselves, it is well, but if not, we cannot take extra trouble for your sake. Mishnah Beth I say, A man may not eat water for his feet unless it is also fit for drinking, but Beth Hillel permitted a man may make a fire and warm himself at it. the scholars. Ask who taught this ruling about fire is it the opinion of all Beth Shammai drawing a distinction between the benefit of the whole body and the benefit of a single limb or does Beth Hillel teach this while Beth Shammai do not differentiate come and here Beth Shammai say a man may not make a fire to warm himself at it but Beth Hillel permitted mission in three things Rabban Gamaliel was stringent in accordance with the ruling of Beth Shammai one may not store at the outset warm water on a festival for the Sabbath and one may not set up a candlestick on a festival and one may not bake bread in large loaves but only in thin wafers Rabban Gamaliel said never did my father's household bake bread in large loaves but only in thin wafers said they to him what can we do with your father's household who were stringent towards themselves and lenient to all Israel permitting them to bake bread both in large loaves and thick cakes tomorrow what are the circumstances if he has set an Arab Tabshalin, what is the reason of Beth and if he had not set an Arab Tabshalin, what is the reason of Beth Hillel said Arhuna? In truth, I can say that he did not set an Arab Tabshalin, but the rabbis permitted him to prepare what is necessary for his sustenance, and Arhuna follows his view. For Arhuna said he who did not set an Arab Tabshalin, others may bake one loaf for him and cook one dish for him, Talmud, Moss by and light one candle for him, it was said in the name of our Isaac. They may also grill a small fish for him, it was taught likewise he who did not set an Arab Tabshalin, one may bake one loaf for him and store one dish for him and light one candle for him and heat one jug of water for him, while some maintain they may also grill a small fish for him, Rabbi says in truth it treats of a case where he did set an Arab Tabshalin, but storing hot water is different, for it is evident that he is doing it for the sake of the Sabbath, have raised an objection, Hananiah. Says that Beth Shammai maintain one may bake only if he set an Arab of bread and one may cook only if he set an Arab of cooked food and one may store only if he had already warm water stored on the eve of the festival but if he had stored water it is as implied at any rate allowed even though it is evident that he is doing it for the sake of the Sabbath therefore said Abay it treats of a case when for example he set an Arab for the one and did not set an Arab for the other and the author is Hananiah according to Beth Shammai and one may not set up a candlestick what does he do said Arhina Abibis we are dealing with a jointed candlestick composed of parts the reason being because it looks like building for Beth Shammai whole building applies also to utensils and Beth Hillel maintain neither building nor pulling down apply to utensils Ola visited Rab Judah and his attendant arose and set up the lamp on the festival Rab Judah raised an objection to Ola he who puts oil in a burning lamp on a Sabbath is culpable on account of kindling and he who draws supplies from it is culpable on account of extinguishing he replied I was not paying attention to it Rab said snuffing the wick is permitted on a festival Abu B. Martha asked Abay may one extinguish the lamp for something else he replied it is possible to take place in another room what if he has no other room it is possible to make a partition what if he has nothing wherewith to make a partition it is possible to cover it the light with a vessel what if he has no vessel he replied it is forbidden he raised an objection one may not extinguish a log in order to save it but it is permitted to extinguish it so that a room or a pot does not become smoky he replied this is the opinion of Arjuna but I am speaking according to the view of the rabbis Abay asked Rabbi may one extinguish a conflagration on a festival when danger of life is involved I do not ask for this is permitted even on a Sabbath I only ask when a loss of money alone is involved what is the law he replied it is forbidden he raised an objection one may not extinguish a log in order to save it but it is permitted to extinguish it so that the room or a pot does not become smoky this is the opinion of Arjuna but I am speaking according to the view of the rabbis Arashi asked Amimar may one medically paint the eyes on a festival when there is a danger for example of discharge pricking pain congestion watering inflammation or the first stages of sickness
of Elul will be intercalated. Surely our Hainan Abikahana said from the days of Ezra and onward we do not find Elul ever intercalated and one may not bake bread in large loaves but only in thin wafers. Our rabbis taught Beth Shammai say one may not bake thick bread on Passover but Beth Hillel permitted and how much is regarded as thick bread said Rab who not a hand bread for so we find with respect to the shoe bread that the loaves were a hand bread in thickness to this Rab Joseph Demer give. They allowed this for experts did they also permit it to non experts if they allowed it in the case of well needed bread are they also to allow it with respect to bread which is not well needed if they allowed it in the case of dry wood would they allow it in the case of moist wood if they allowed it in the case of a hot oven would they allow it in the case of a cold oven if they allowed it in the case of a metal oven would they allow it in the case of a clay oven said our Jeremiah B. Abba. Ask my teacher of Israel privately what is meant by thick bread and he replied a large quantity of bread others say our Jeremiah B. Abba said in Rab's name I asked my teacher of Israel by the holy privately what is meant by thick bread and he replied a large quantity of bread and why do they call it thick bread because there is more needing to be done alternatively in the district of this tana they call a large quantity of bread thick bread consider the reason is that he labors. Unnecessarily then why teach particularly about Passover this should hold good of other festivals as well it is even so only the Tana was dealing with Passover it was taught likewise Beth Shammai say one may not bake a large quantity of bread on a festival but Beth Hillel permitted Mishnah he furthermore gave three lenient rulings one may sweep the dining room and put the spices on the fire on a festival and one may prepare a helmet of kit on Passover night but the sages forbid these. Gemara RC said the dispute is only with respect to perfuming clothes but when it is for smelling all agree that it is permitted an objection was raised one may not sweep the dining room on a festival but in the house of Rabban Gamaliel they did sweep our Eliezer Bizotic said frequently I accompanied my father to the house of Rabban Gamaliel and observed that they did not sweep the dining room on a festival but they swept it on the eve of the festival and covered it with sheets on it. Tomorrow when guests came they removed the sheets with the result that the room was automatically swept they said to him if so it is permitted to do the same even on the Sabbath and one may not put the spices on the fire on a festival but in the house of Rabban Gamaliel they did put said our Eliezer Bizotic frequently I accompanied my father to the house of Rabban Gamaliel and observed that they did not put the spices on the fire on a festival but they used to bring in iron censers and fill. Them with the perfume of the incense on the eve of the festival and stop up the vent holes on the eve of the festival on the morrow when guests came they opened the vent holes with the reset that the room was automatically perfumed they said to him if so it is permitted to do the same even on a sabbath but if stated it was thus stated rsc said the dispute is when it is for smelling but when it is for perfuming clothes it is forbidden the scholars ask may one fumigate fruits on a festival our jeremiah b abba in rab's name says it is forbidden but samuel says it is permissible our says it is forbidden because he extinguishes the charcoal set our to him let the master say because he kindles the spices he answered him at first he extinguishes and afterwards he kindles rab judah says on charcoal fire it is forbidden talmud moss bites on hot shirts it is permitted but rabba maintains on hot shirts it is also forbidden because he generates a fragrance in the shirt, Rabbah and our Joseph both say it is forbidden to invert a box of aromatics on silken garments on a festival because he is producing a fragrance in the garments. And why is this case different from the berry? Though one may rub it aromatic wood and smell it, and one may nip off a bit of it and smell it, there the fragrance is indeed present, and one only increases the smell. Whilst here he produces a fragrance in the garments. Rabbah, however, says on charcoal too it is permitted, for it is just as roasting meat on a charcoal fire. Argabiha from Bikathel expounded at the door of the eggs. A large keturah is allowed. Amimar said to him, "What is meant by keturah? If it means the plating of sleeves, creasing of garments, then it is a craftsman's work. And if it means to fumigate, it is surely forbidden, for he indeed extinguishes." Said Arashi to him, "In truth, it means to fumigate, but it is analogous to roasting meat on a charcoal fire." Some teach Amimar said to him, "What is?" Meant by Keturah if it means the plating of sleeves then it is a craftsman's work and if it means to fumigate it is surely forbidden for he produces a perfume said Arashi I told it to him and in the name of a great man did I tell it to him in truth it means to fumigate but it is analogous to roasting meat on a charcoal fire and one may prepare a helmet of kid it was taught our Jose said Theodosius of Rome introduced among the community of Rome the practice of eating a helmet of kid on Passover night they the rabbi sent word to him if you were not Theodosius we would have condemned you to excommunication for you are causing the children of Israel to eat consecrated animals outside of Jerusalem do you really mean consecrated animals say rather that which is similar to consecrated animals Mishnah three things are Eliezer B. Ezra permitted and the sages forbade his cow was led out on a Sabbath with a leather strap between her horns and he also ruled that one May curry cattle on a festival and one may grind pepper in a pepper mill. Our Judah says one may not curry cattle on a festival because it makes a wound thereby, but one may comb. But the sages say one may neither curry nor comb. Gemara shall it be said that our Eliezer B. Ezra had only one cow. Surely Rab some say Rab Judah in Rab's name said our Eliezer B. Ezra had given his tithe 13,000 calves yearly from his herd. It was taught it was not his cow but of a neighboring lady and because he did not restrain her it is referred to as his and one may curry cattle on a festival. Our rabbis taught what is curry and what is combing. Currying is done with a small toothed comb and causes wounds. Combing is done with a large toothed comb and does not cause wounds. And there are three views with respect to this. Our Judah maintains an unintentional act is forbidden, but curry is done with fine teeth and causes wounds while combing is done with large teeth and does not. Cause wounds and we do not preventively prohibit combing on account of currying. The sages are likewise of our Judah's opinion that an unintentional act is forbidden, but they preventively prohibit combing on account of currying. And our Eliezer B. Ezra holds as our Simeon who says an unintentional act is permitted. Hence both currying and combing is allowed. Rabbah in the name of our in the name of Samuel said some say our himself said the Halachagas as our Simeon since our Eliezer B. Ezra agrees with him said Rabbah to our let the master say the Halachagas as our Judah since the sages agree with him. He replied to him I hold as our Simeon and furthermore our Eliezer B. Ezra agrees with him. Talmud, Moss bites of emission of pepper mill is susceptible to defilement on account of it consisting of three separate utensils on account of a receptacle on account of a metal utensil and on account of a sifting utensil. Gemara was taught the lower part becomes defiled as a Receptacle the middle part as a sifting utensil the upper part as a metal vessel mission a child's go-cart is susceptible to the defilement of midras and it may be handled on Sabbath and it may be pulled along only on matting our Judah says no articles may be dragged along the floor except the wagon because it only presses the earth down Gemara a child's go-cart is susceptible to the defilement of midras because he the child supports himself thereon and it may be handled on Sabbath because it is considered a utensil and it may be pulled along only on matting only on matting but not on the earth what is the reason because he makes a rug for the author of this is therefore our Judah who says an unintentional act is forbidden for if it were our Simeon surely he maintains an unintentional act is permitted for it was taught our Simeon says a man may drag along a bed stool or bench on the floor provided he has no intention of making a furrow but read the last clause our Judah says Nothing may be dragged along the floor on the Sabbath except a wagon because it only presses the earth down only because it presses it down but it does not make a furrow. There are two tanim who differ as to the opinion of our Judah C H A P T E R I I Mishnah. One may not catch fish from a fish pond on a festival nor give them food but one may catch venison or game from animal enclosures and one may put food before them. Rabbin Simeon R. Gamaliel says not all enclosures are alike. This is the general rule Talmud. Moss bites out whenever chasing is still necessary it is forbidden but where chasing is not still necessary it is permitted. Gemara now the scholars pointed out a contradiction. One may not catch animals from enclosures of venison and game on a festival nor may one put food before them thus the rulings on venison are contradictory and those on game are contradictory as for the rulings on venison it is well and there is no difficulty one agreeing with our
Enclosure Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel says not all enclosures are alike etc. are Joseph said in the name of Rab Judah in the name of Samuel the Halachah is as Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel Abbe said to him the Halachah is etc. from which it would follow that the sages disputed he said to him what practical difference does it make to you he replied to him is a lesson to be recited as a sing song this is the general rule whenever chasing is still necessary etc. what is meant by chasing is still Necessary said our Joseph in the name of Samuel whensoever one has to say bring a trap so that we may catch it said Abbe to him but what of geese and hens where one also says bring a net so that we may catch it and yet it was taught he who catches geese hens or Herodian doves he is free said Rabbi son of Arhunah in the name of Samuel these come at night into their coops for roosting but those do not come at night into their coops but what of doves of a dovecot and doves of a loft which likewise come at night into their coops and yet it was taught he who catches doves of a dovecot or doves of a loft or birds nesting in nests or in a residence is liable rather said Rabbi son of Arhunah in the name of Samuel these come at night into their coops and their feeding is your obligation but those come at night into their coops but you are not obliged to feed them Armari says these are in the habit of fleeing but those make no attempt to flee but surely all of them make an attempt. To flee I mean they are wont to flee to their nest mission if traps for wild animals birds or fish were set on the eve of the festival one may not take from them on the festival unless he knows that they were already caught on the eve of the festival and it once happened that a certain gentile brought fish to Rabban Gamaliel who said they are permitted but I have no wish to accept them from him Gamari you quote an incident to contradict the teaching of the mission there is a lacuna in the text and learn thus when a doubt prevails whether it is in Mukan it is forbidden but Rabban Gamaliel permits it and it once happened that a certain gentile brought fish to Rabban Gamaliel who said they are permitted but I have no wish to accept them from him Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the Halacha is not as Rabban Gamaliel some recited at the statement of Samuel with reference to the following teaching when a doubt prevails whether it was Mukan Rabban Gamaliel permits and are Joshua prohibits said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel the Halachah is as our Joshua some again recited with reference to the following teaching Talmud, Moss bites of B1 may slaughter animals out of enclosures on a festival but not out of hunting nets or jins. Our Simeon B. Eliezer says if he came on the eve of the festival and finds them the nets or jins damaged then it is certain that they were caught on the eve of the festival and consequently they are permitted but if he came on the festival and finds them damaged it is certain that they were caught on the festival and are therefore prohibited. Now this is self-contradictory first you say if he came on the eve of the festival and finds them damaged it is certain that they were caught on the eve of the festival hence it is only because he came and found them damaged but if a doubt exists they are forbidden consider then the latter clause if he came on the festival and finds them damaged it is certain that they were Caught on the festival, thus it is only because he came and found them damaged on the festival. But if a doubt exists, then I say they were caught on the eve of the festival and are therefore permitted. This is what he means if he came on the eve of the festival and found them damaged. It is certain that they were caught on the eve of the festival and are permitted. But if a doubt exists, it is regarded as if they had been caught on the festival and they are forbidden. Said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel the Halachah says, Our Simeon B. Eliezer, who said they are permitted, for what purpose are they permitted? Rab says they are permitted to be received, and Levi says they are permitted to be eaten. Said Rab, a man should never absent himself from the academy even for a single hour, for I and Levi were both present when Rabbi taught this lesson in the evening. He said they are permitted to be eaten, but on the following morning he said they are permitted to be received. I who was present in the Academy retracted, but Levi, who was not present in the academy, did not retract. An objection is raised if a Gentile brings a present to an Israelite, even slimy fish or fruit gathered on the same day, they are permitted. This is well on the view that they are permitted to be received, but on the view that they are permitted to be eaten, is then fruit picked on the same day permitted to be eaten. Now, even according to your reasoning, is then fruit gathered on the same day permitted to be handled. But we treat here of fish that are red at the gills and of fruit preserved in leaves, and why does he call them of the same day? Because they are as fresh as if they had been gathered on the same day. Our Papa said the law is if a Gentile brought a present to an Israelite on a festival, then if there is of that kind still attached to the ground, it is prohibited, and in the evening it is also prohibited for as long a time as it takes to gather, but if there is nothing of the same kind attached to the earth and within the Tehum it is permitted Talmud, Moss bites up but outside the Tehum it is prohibited and what is brought from outside the Tehum for one Israelite is permitted for another Israelite Rabbi son of Arhunah said in Rab's name if one stops up the pond from a stream on the eve of a festival and on the following morning he finds fish there and they are permitted said Arhistah from the words of our master we learn that if a wild beast takes up its abode in an orchard. Predetermination of the young for the festival is not necessary said Arnam and our colleague has fallen among the great some say Rabbi son of Arhunah said from the words of our master we learn that if an animal takes up its abode in an orchard predetermination is not necessary said Arnam and the son of our colleague has fallen among the great there he has not performed an action whereas here he did perform an action does it then not require special predetermination surely it was taught. If an animal takes up its abode in all orchard it requires predetermination and a free bird must be tied by her wings so that it should not be mistaken for its mother and this they heard in the name of Shemaiah and Abtalion this is indeed a refutation does it then require predetermination surely it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth and Beth Hillel agree that if he determined on doves within the nest and finds them in front of the nest they are forbidden this only applies to doves of a dovecot or doves of a loft and birds nesting in nests and pits but these hens and Herodian doves and animals having their abodes in orchards are permitted and do not require predetermination and a free bird must be tied by its wings so that it should not be mistaken for its mother and those that were tied up and those that have been handled if found in pits houses dikes or trenches are permitted but if on trees they are forbidden lest he climb up and pluck fruit at the same Time and those that are tied and those that have been handled wherever they are found are forbidden on account of robbery said Arnam and there is no difficulty the one applies to the young bird the other to its mother is then determination alone sufficient for the mother bird it still requires to be caught rather said Arnam and B. Isaac both treat of the young but the one refers to a garden near the city and the other refers to a garden which is not situated near the city mission one may slaughter on a festival an animal at the point of death only if there is time enough on that day to eat thereof as much as an olive of roasted flesh our Akiva says even if there is only time to eat as much as an olive of raw flesh taken from the place of slaughter if he slaughtered it in the field he may not bring it in on a pole or a barrow but he brings it in piece by piece in his hand tomorrow Rami B. Abba said flaying and cutting up is required in the case of a burnt offering and it same holds good with respect to butchers. The Torah teaches in this good reading that one should not eat flesh before flaying and cutting up. What does he inform us if I were to say that it is to reject the opinion of Arhuna who said an animal when alive stands in the presumption of a forbidden object until you ascertain how it was slaughtered? Once it is slaughtered, it stands in the presumption of being permitted until it becomes known to you how it became trefah. But surely we have learned in our Mishnah as Arhuna, for we have learned our Akiva says even if there is only time to eat as much as an olive or raw flesh taken from the place of slaughter, does it not mean literally from the place where it is slaughtered? No, it means from the place where it digests the food. But our high taught it means literally from the place where it is slaughtered. Rather, Rami B. Abba Talmud, Moss by Tzabi merely teaches us good matters as it was taught a man should not begin to eat leek or onion from it. Top side but from the leaves and if he did eat he is a glutton likewise a man should not drink his cup of wine in one draft and if he did so drink he is a swiller or rabbis taught he who drinks his beaker in one draft is greedy in two drafts is well mannered in three drafts is haughty Rami B. Abba further said the ivy cuts off the feet of criminals the law concerning young trees cuts off the feet of butchers and of those cohabiting with menstruous women the lupin will cut off it. Feet of the enemies of Israel for it is said and the children of Israel again did that which has evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Balaam and the Ashtarot and the gods of Aram and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of
Number of people need him. It is permitted our nomin said to have a be at a Zion's messenger when you go hither make a circuit and go over the promontory of Tyre and visit our Jacob B.E.D. and ask him what do you say with respect to a palanquin before he came there our Jacob B.E.D. departed this life when he arrived he found our Zerika he asked him how do you rule with respect to a palanquin he replied thus did our M.I. say it is permissible provided that he is not carried on the shoulders what means? Provided that he is not carried on the shoulders said our Joseph the son of Rabba by means of Alanki, but it is not so for Arnaman permitted his wife Jalfa to be carried in a sedan chair by means of Alanki. it is different with Jalfa for she was nervous Amimar and Marzitra were carried on the shoulders on the Sabbath preceding the festival on account of nervousness and some say on account of troubling the public mission if a firstling fell into a pit our Judah says let an expert go down and inspect it Talmud, Moss Baita if it had a blemish he may bring it up and slaughter it but if not he may not slaughter it our Simeon says whenever its blemish was not observed on the day before the festival it is not moving tomorrow wherein do they differ if we are to say that they differ as to whether one may examine blemishes on a festival our Judah holding one may examine blemishes on a festival while our Simeon maintains one may not examine blemishes on a festival then let them dispute. Whether one may examine blemishes in general on a festival it is especially necessary to teach this with respect to a firstling that fell into a pit for you might have thought that on account of suffering of animals one might have recourse to an artifice and bring it up from the pit in accordance with our Joshua so he informs us that it is not so if so instead of he may not slaughter it it should be stated he may not bring it up and slaughter it this teaching is necessary only. Where he transgressed and brought it the animal up you might think that he may slaughter it so he informs us that it is not so but how could he possibly slaughter it surely it is without blemish this is necessary concerning the case where it received the blemish but it is mooks rather it treats of a case where it received a temporary transient blemish on the eve of the festival and now on the festival it turned into a permanent blemish you might have thought that he the owner. Had set his mind upon it and he may therefore slaughter it so he informs us that it is not so our rabbis taught a firstling without blemish that fell into a pit our Judah the prince says let an expert go down the pit and examine it if it has sustained a blemish he may bring it up and slaughter it but if not he may not slaughter it our Simeon Bimanesia said to him if the rabbis indeed said one may not examine blemishes on a festival how is this to be explained if it received a blemish on the eve of the festival one may not examine it on the festival if it received a blemish Talmud, Moss bites a bee on the festival our Simeon Bimanesia says this is not Mukin but they agree that if it is born on a festival with a blemish it is regarded as Mukin Rabbi son of Arhu not expounded if it is born with a blemish one may examine it at the outset on a festival our said to him my father taught if he transgressed and examined it, it is an examination and you say one may examine. It at the outset of a said the opinion of Rabbi son of Arhunah is more acceptable for it the previous Baratha teaches three cases if it received the blemish on the eve of the festival you may not examine it on the festival it is only at the outset that you may not examine but if it has been done it is well and good if it received the blemish on the festival our Simeon says this is not Mukin i.e. even if it has been examined it still may not be slaughtered and then it states but they agree. That if it is born on a festival with a blemish it is regarded as Mukin i.e. even at the very outset but surely when our Ashai came he brought with him the following teaching whether it received the blemish on the eve of the festival or whether it received the blemish on the festival the sages say this is not regarded as Mukin but then there is a contradiction from the other Baratha the author of that Baratha is Adabi Akmai who blunders in his teaching Arnaman B. Isaac said Armisha. Also proves this for it states our Simeon says whenever its blemish was not observed on the day before the festival it is not Mukin what means its blemish was not observed if I were to say that no blemish was visible at all then it is obvious need this be taught therefore it means that it was not examined by an expert on the eve of the festival whether it was a passing blemish or a permanent blemish nevertheless it teaches it is not Mukin understand therefrom that it is so our Hillel asked. Rabbah does the law of Mukhs apply to a part of the Sabbath or not how can such a contingency arise if they the fruit were fit at twilight they were fit and if at twilight they were not fit then they are not fit it applies to a case where at twilight they were fit but afterwards became unfit and then again became fit what is the law he replied to him the law of Mukhs applies he raised an objection but they agree that if it is born with a blemish it is regarded as Mukin but why let us say. This firstling was originally fit through its mother when it was born it became debarred from use on it being shown to an expert it became permitted answered Abbe some say our safra it means for example that the experts were present there at the time of birth some teach he replied to him the law of muksa does not apply to a part of the sabbath shall we say the following supports him but they agree that if it is born with a blemish it is regarded as muk and now this firstling was originally fit through its mother when it was born it became debarred from use on it being shown to an expert it became permitted answered Abbe some say our safra it means for example that the experts were present there at the time of birth come and here if one was eating grapes on a sabbath and left some over which he carried up on the roof to make from them raisins or was eating figs and left some over which he carried up on the roof to make from them dry figs he may eat of them on the festival only if he had designated them before the festival the same is true of peaches quinces and other kinds of fruit now what are the circumstances if they were fit why must he designate them if on the other hand they were not fit then what even if he does designate them and if you say that he did not know whether they were fit or not surely our kahana said fruit set aside for drying which had dried before the eve of the festival even if the owners did not know it are permitted hence it must surely treat of a case where they were fit but afterwards became debarred from use and then again became fit now if you maintain the law of muksa does not apply to such a case why is it necessary to designate them what then the law of muksa does apply then what if he does designate them rather it treats of a case where they were only half fit some people eating them and some not if he designated them he made known his mind but if he did not designate them he did not make known his mind. Arzera said, "Come and hear an argument from beans and lentils. For beans and lentils are in their raw state, fit for chewing. By putting them in a pot for cooking, they become an edible Talmud. Moss bites a, and when their cooking is finished, they are again fit." Said Abay to him, "Then, according to your reasoning, cooked dishes in general present a difficulty. For usually dishes at twilight are seething, and yet in the evening we eat them. But the truth is, if they can become fit through human means, there is no question at all. Our question is only when they become fit through heaven. Our Judah the prince had a firstling and sent it on the festival to our Mi. He, however, did not want to examine it. Said Arzera, "Some say our Jeremiah to him in a dispute between our Judah and our Simeon. The Halachah is as our Judah afterwards he sent it to our Isaac the Smith. He too did not want to examine it. Said our Jeremiah, "Some say our Zerika to him in a dispute between our." Judah and our Simeon the Halachahis as our Judah said our Abba to him why did you not allow the rabbis to act according to our Simeon he replied what support have you he said to him thus did our Zerah say the Halachahis as our Simeon a certain person exclaimed may it fall to my lot to go thither Palestine and learn this teaching from the mouth of the master when he came thither he met our Zerah and asked him did you sir say the Halachahis as our Simeon he replied to him no I only said his view is to be preferred for since our Mishnah states our Simeon says whenever its blemish was not observed before the festival it is not Mukin and the Baritha teaches the same in the name of the sages it follows that his opinion is to be preferred how then does the law stand said our Joseph come and here for it hangs on strong ropes for our Simeon because he said in the name of our Joshua be Levi in the name of our Jose be Saul in the name of Rabbi in the name of the holy congregation of Jerusalem our Simeon be Messiah. And his contemporaries have said the Halachahis as Armeir they have said but these are much older than he therefore say they taught it according to the opinion of Armeir for we have learned if one slaughtered a firstling and only afterwards showed its blemish to an expert our Judah permits it but Armeir says since it was slaughtered without the permission of an expert it is forbidden consequently Armeir holds that the examination of a firstling is not like the examination of a trefa. For the examination of a firstling must take place during life but the examination of a trefa is done after slaughtering hence it follows that the examination of a trefa takes place even on a festival but the examination of a firstling must take place only on the eve of the
A certain man brought a firstling before Rabbah on the eve of a festival towards evening. Rabbah was sitting and combing his head. He lifted up his eyes and looked at the blemish and said to him, Go now and come tomorrow. When he came on the following day, he asked him, How did it happen? He replied, Barley was strewn on the one side of the hedge, and it, the firstling was on the other side as it wanted to eat thereof. It stuck its head through the hedge, and the hedge tore its lips. Said he to him, Perhaps you caused this intentionally. He replied to him, No, and whence do you know that the intentional causing of a blemish renders it forbidden? For it was taught, There shall not be any blemish therein. I only know that no blemish may be therein. Whence do I know that one may not indirectly cause a blemish to it through something, for example, that he may not bring dough or press fix and put them on the ear in order that a dog may come and take it? The text says, Not any blemish, it says blemish. And it says any blemish mission if a beast died on a festival it may not be moved from its place it happened they once asked our Tarfon concerning this and concerning Hala that became defiled he went into the academy and inquired and they answered him they may not be moved from their place Gamara shall it be said that we have learned anonymously not as our Simeon for we have learned our Simeon says one may cut up cords for cattle and a carcass for dogs our Judah says if the animal was not yet dead. On the eve of the Sabbath it is forbidden you can say if the mission can even be as our Simeon for our Simeon admits that living animals that died on the Sabbath are forbidden this is hell very well according to Mar Biamimar in the name of Rabbah who said our Simeon admits that living animals that died on the Sabbath are forbidden but according to Mar the son of our Joseph in the name of Rabbah who says our Simeon disputes even in the case of living animals which died on the Sabbath maintaining. That they are permitted what is there to be said. Zeiri explained it with respect to a consecrated animal. Our mission also proves this for it teaches concerning this and concerning Hala that became defiled. Just as Hala is consecrated, so is the animal one that is consecrated. Then the reason is that it was consecrated, but if the animal was not consecrated, it is permitted. This is all very well according to Mar the son of Ar Joseph in the name of Rabbah who says Ar Simeon disputes even in the case of living animals which died on the Sabbath, maintaining that they are permitted. But according to Mar Biamimar in the name of Rabbah who says Ar Simeon agrees that living animals which died on the Sabbath are forbidden. What is there to be said? It treats here of an animal that had been in a dangerous condition on the eve of the festival, and it is according to the opinion of all Mishnah one may not on the festival be counted in as having a share in the animal at the outset, but People may be counted in on the eve of the festival as having a share in the animal and they slaughter it and divide it between them. Gemara what means one may not be counted in as having a share said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel one may not on a festival at the outset arrange about the price of an animal how should he do it said Rab let him bring two animals and place them side by side and say this one is like the other one it was likewise taught one may not say to his neighbor I want to go shares with you in your animal to the value of a seller I want to go shares with you to the value of two sellers but he may say I want to go shares with you for a half or for a third or for a fourth Talmud. Moss bites omission our Judah says a man may weigh meat on a festival against the utensil or against the butcher's chopper but the sages say one may not look on the pair of scales at all Gemara what means not at all said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel even to protect it the flesh from my said R.E.D.B. Abin this only applies if it the scales hang on a hook Rab Judah in the name of Samuel further said a skilled butcher may not weigh meat on a festival even by hand Rab Judah in the name of Samuel further said a skilled butcher may not weigh meat on a festival in water Rab Hai Ashi said one may not cut a handle in the meat said Rabbanah but with the hand it is permitted to make a handle Arhuna said it is permitted to make a mark on the meat just as Rabbah son of Arhuna was wont to cut at the meat in a triangular shape Arhai and Arsimian be Rabbi weighed one portion against another portion on the festival according to whom it is neither according to Arjudah nor according to the rabbis for if according to Arjudah surely he says a man may weigh meat on a festival against the utensil or against the butcher's chopper only against the utensil but not against any other thing and if according to the rabbis surely they say one may not look on the pair of scales at all they acted as our Joshua for it was taught our Joshua says one may weigh one portion against another portion on a festival said our Joseph the Halachah is as our Joshua since we learned in tractate Pekaroth in accordance with his view for we have learned as to consecrated animals that became disqualified the benefit of them belongs to the temple and one may weigh the meat portion against portion in the case of the firstling said Abbe to him perhaps it is not so perhaps our Joshua says this. Only here where there is no disrespect to consecrated animals but not there where there is a disrespect to consecrated animals alternatively perhaps the rabbi said this only there because it does not appear as everyday practice but not here which appears like an ordinary transaction shall it be said that they were very particular with each other but there were seven fishes brought to the house of rabbi and although five of them were found in the house of our high yet our Simeon B. Rabbi did. Not mind answered our papalink a different person with each of them either it was our high and our Ishmael son of our Jose or it was our Simeon be rabbi and Barka permission one may not wet a knife on a festival but one may draw it over another knife to sharpen it Gemara Arhuna said they only taught this of a whetstone but it is permitted on a knife board said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel that which you say that on a wet dash stone it is forbidden applies only to sharpening it but to remove its grease is permitted whence it follows that on a knife board even sharpening is permitted some taught this on the concluding part it is permitted on a knife dash board said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel that which you said that on a knife dash board it is permitted applies only to the removal of its grease but to sharpen it is forbidden whence it follows that on a whetstone even to remove its grease is forbidden some taught this on our Mishnah one may not wet a knife on a festival said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel they only taught this with respect to sharpening it but to remove its grease is permitted whence it follows that to draw it over another knife is permitted even for the purpose of sharpening it and others taught this on the concluding part of our mission but one may draw it over another knife said Rab Judah in the name of Samuel they only taught this with respect to removing its grease but to sharpen it is prohibited whence it follows that on a whetstone even to remove its grease is prohibited who is the authority of our mission that on a whetstone it is forbidden said Arhistah it is not as our Judah for it was taught the festival is distinguished from the Sabbath only with respect to the preparing of food alone our Judah permits on a festival even the preliminaries for the preparing of food Rabbah said to Arhistah may we lecture in your name that the Halacha is as our Judah he replied to him may it be God's will that you lecture all good things of this. Sword in my name, Arniamai, the son of our Joseph, said, I was standing on a festival before Rabbi Talmud, Moss bites of was dropping a knife on the edge of a basket, and I asked him, Do you, sir, want to sharpen it, or do you want to remove its grease? And he replied to me to remove its grease, but it was clear to me that he was engaged in sharpening only. He was of the opinion, thus is the halajah, but one does not teach it publicly. Abe also related, I was standing before the master who was dropping a knife on the edge of a mill, and I asked him, Do you, sir, want to sharpen it, or do you want to remove its grease? And he replied to me to remove its grease, but it was clear to me that he was engaged in sharpening, but he was of the opinion, thus is the halajah, but one does not teach it publicly. The scholars ask, May one show a knife on a festival to a sage, Armari, the son of our business permits, and the rabbis forbid it, but our Joseph says a scholar may examine a knife for himself and Lent it to another. Our Joseph further said, if a knife became blunt, it may be sharpened on a festival, and this applies only in the case when it can cut with difficulty. Our his some say, our Joseph lectured with respect to a knife dented and a spit with the point broken off, and the sweeping out of a stove and a pot range on a festival. We come to the dispute between our Judah and the rabbis, for it was taught the festival is distinguished from the Sabbath only with respect to the preparing of food alone. Our Judah permits even the preliminaries for the preparing of food. What is the reason of the first tana? Scripture says that alone may be done for you only that, but not the preliminaries for the preparation. And our Judah, the text says for you, for you means for all your needs. And the first tana, surely it says for you, he will reply to you. That text for you signifies, but not for a heathen. And the other, surely it also says that alone he will reply to you. That is written, and for you is. Written yet there is no contradiction the one applies to preliminaries which can be
Muhammad Ibu, they say, give me an Uzia or half an Uzia in Nihar Pekat and in Matha Mahaja, they say, give me a Rebay or half a Rebay mission. A man may say on a festival to his neighbor, fill me this vessel, but not in a measure. Arjuna says, if it was a measuring vessel, he may not fill it. It is related of Abbasal B. Bat that he used to fill up his measures on the eve of a festival and give them to his customers on the festival. Abbasal says he used to do so during the intermediary days of a festival too on account of the clearness of measure, but the sages say he used also to do so on an ordinary day for the sake of the draining of the measures. Gamara, what means, but not in a measure, said Rab Judah in Samuel's name, but not in a vessel set aside as a measure, but one may fill a vessel held in reserve for measuring, whereupon Arjuna said one may not fill even a vessel held in reserve as a measure. This proves that where the joy of the festival is concerned, Arjuna is stringent and the rabbis are lenient, but we know of them to the contrary, for we have learned Arjuna says a man may weigh meat on a festival against a utensil or a butcher's chopper, but the sages say one may not look on the pair of scales at all, which proves that Arjuna is lenient and the rabbis are stringent, hence there is a contradiction in the rulings of Arjuna and a contradiction in the rulings of the rabbis. Arjuna is not self-contradictory, for there it treats of a vessel not held in reserve as a measure, whereas here it treats of a vessel which is held in reserve as a measure. The rabbis too are not self-contradictory, for there he acts as one acts on an ordinary day, but here he does not act as one acts on an ordinary day. Rabbi says what means but not in a measure it is that he may not mention to him the name of the measure, but one may fill a vessel appointed as a measure, whereupon Arjuna said one may not fill a vessel appointed as a measure. This proves that where the Joy of the festival is concerned, Arjuna is stringent and the rabbis are lenient, but we know of them to the contrary, for we have learned Arjuna says a man may weigh meat on a festival against a utensil or a butcher's chopper, but the sages say you may not look on the pair of scales at all, which proves that Arjuna is lenient and the rabbis are stringent, hence there is a contradiction in the rulings of Arjuna and a contradiction in the rulings of the rabbis. Arjuna is not self contradictory, for there it is not appointed as a measure, but here it is appointed as a measure. The rabbis too are not self contradictory, for there he acts as one acts on an ordinary day, but here he does not act as one acts on an ordinary day, for people are accustomed to pass wine in a measuring vessel and drink therefrom. It is related of Abbas Albi Bat taught he also used to act thus during the intermediary days of a festival on account of disturbing study in the Academy or rabbis taught he collected 300 jugs of wine from the foam of the measures and his associates collected 300 jugs of oil from the drops of the measures and they brought them to the treasurers of the temple in Jerusalem who said to them there is no need for you to do this they replied to them we too will have none of it they said to them since you act so stringently with yourselves then apply it to public purposes for it was taught if one robbed and he does not know whom he robbed he must apply it to public purposes what are such said are his style well stitches and grottoes are his style took rabbana akbab about and lectured a man may not measure barley on a festival and give it to his animal but he may scoop up with his hand a cab full or two cabs full and give it to his animal without fear and the baker may measure spices and put them in his pot so as not to spoil the dish our jeremiah b abba said in rab's name a woman may measure flour on a festival and make it up into dough in order that she may separate hala generously, but Samuel says it is forbidden, but the school of Samuel taught it is permitted. Said Abbe now that Samuel says it is forbidden, and the school of Samuel taught it is permitted. Talmud, Moss bites of then Samuel's purpose is to inform us the halacha for actual practice. Our rabbis taught one may not sit flour a second time on a festival in the name of our papas and our Judah but they said one may sit it a second time, but they agreed that if a pebble or a splinter fell in one may sit it again, a tanner recited in the presence of Rabbana, one may not sit flour a second time on a festival, but if a pebble or a splinter fell in he may pick it out with his hand, he said to him, All the more this is forbidden because it is in the nature of selecting Rabbah the son of Arunazudi expounded at the gate of Nihartia, one may sit flour a second time on a festival, our said to them, his disciples, go and say to Abitik. Your favors and throw them on thorns. Come and see how many sieves are being used in Nihardia. The wife of our Joseph sifted flour on an inverted sieve. He said to her, Take notice that I want good bread. The wife of Arashi sifted flour on the top side of the table. Said Arashi, This my wife is the daughter of Rami Bihama, and Rami Bihama was a man of pious deeds. And unless she had seen this in the home of her parents, she would not have done admission. A man may go to a shopkeeper whom he generally patronizes and say to him, Give me so many eggs and nuts, and stating the number for this is the way of a householder to reckon in his own home. Gemara, our rabbis taught a man may go to a cattle dealer whom he generally patronizes and say to him, Give me one kid or one lamb to a butcher whom he generally patronizes and say to him, Give me one shoulder or one leg to a poultry breeder whom he generally patronizes and say to him, Give me one dove or one pigeon to a baker whom he generally patronizes. And say to him, give me one loaf or one roll, and to a shopkeeper whom he generally patronizes, and say to him, give me twenty eggs or fifty nuts or ten peaches or five pomegranates or one etheric, provided that he does not mention any measure. Our Simeon B. Eliezer says, provided that he does not mention any sum of money, C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-V Mishnah, when one takes jars of wine from place to place, he may not carry them in a basket or in a hamper, but he may carry them on his shoulder or in front of him. Likewise, one who carries straw may not let the bundle of straw hang down over his back, but must carry it in his hand, and one may start using a heap of straw talmud, moss bites out, but one may not start using wood from a penthouse. Gemara attended taught if it is impossible to carry it in an unusual way, it is permitted to carry in a basket or hamper. Rabba enacted in Mechiza, whatever load one usually carries with a great effort must be carried on a festival on a carrying pole. Whatever is usually carried on a carrying pole is to be carried on a festival by a yoke. Whatever is usually carried by a yoke is to be carried on a festival by a hand barrow. Whatever is usually carried by a hand barrow on a festival, a cloth is to be spread over it. But if it is impossible to vary the usual procedure, it is permitted for a master said. If it is impossible to carry it in an unusual way, it is permitted. Our and B. Rabbah said to Arashi, did the rabbi say that on a festival every work as far as possible should be done in an unusual way? But these are women fill their pitchers with water on a festival without any alteration, and we do not say anything to them. He replied to him, because it is impossible in any other way. For how should it be done if a woman who usually draws water in a large pitcher should have to draw in a small pitcher? Then she would have to do more walking if a woman who usually draws in a small pitcher should have to draw in a Large pitcher, then you would increase her burden. Should she cover the vessel with a wooden lid, it might fall off, and she will have to carry it. Should she bind it fast, it might become unfastened, and she would be caused to tie it up again. Should she spread a cloth over it, it might become soaked in water, and she'd be led to wring it out. Therefore, it is impossible. Otherwise, Rabbi son of Arhanin said to Abbe, We have learned you may not clap the hands or slap the thighs or dance, and yet we indeed see that people do this, and we do not take them to task. He replied to him, And according to your opinion, that which Rabbi said, a man may not sit down at the entrance of the Lehi, lest an object should roll away, and he come to carry it four cubits in a public thoroughfare. Yet there are these women who take their water rugs and go and sit at the entrance of an alley, and we do not say anything to them, but let Israel go their way. It is better that they should err in ignorance then. Presumptuously here also I say let Israel go their way it is better that they should err in ignorance than presumptuously this however applies only to a rabbinical prohibition but not to a biblical prohibition but it is not so whether it the prohibition is biblical or rabbinical we do not tell them anything for the additional time to the day of atonement is a biblical injunction yet people eat and drink until dusk and we do not say anything to them and one may start using a heap of straw said Arkahana this proves that one may start using wood for the first time from a store on a festival with whom does that agree with our Simeon who does not hold the law of Muxa and consider the last clause but one may not start using stored wood from a penthouse this is in accordance with our Judah who holds the prohibition of Muxa we treat here of cedar and cypress wood which are Muxa on account of monetary
Hold the prohibition of mooks for it was taught the oil left over in the lamp or in the dishes forbidden to be used on Sabbath but our Simeon permits it but what comparison is it there the man sits and waits for the going out of the lamp but here does then a man sit and wait for his hut to collapse said Arnaman B. Isaac we treat here of a tottering hut so that he had his mind set upon it since the day before they agree however with respect to a tabernacle on the feast of tabernacles that it is forbidden but if he stipulated concerning it everything depends upon his reservation is then a stipulation concerning it of any avail surely our she's hate set on the authority of our Akiba once do we know that the wood of the tabernacle is forbidden for use the entire seven days of the festival from the verse on the fifteenth day of the seventh month is the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord and it was taught our Judah B. But there it says once do we know that just as the festival offering bears the name of heaven so also the Sukkah tabernacle bears the name of heaven because the text says the feast hag of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord just as the festival offering is for the Lord so is the Sukkah for the Lord said Arminasai the son of Rabbah the concluding clause refers to an ordinary hut but the stipulation with respect to a festival booth is of no avail yet is it not valid in the case of a festival booth surely it was taught if one covered it the festival booth according to law and decorated it with handmade carpets and tapestries and hung there in nuts almonds peaches pomegranates and bunches of grapes vines oils and fine meal and wreaths of ears of corn it is forbidden to make use of them until the termination of the last day of the festival and if he stipulated thereon everything depends upon his stipulation Abay and Rabbah both say this refers to one who says before the festival I will not stand aloof from them right through the period of twilight so that the sanctity of the festival did not fall upon them but as to the wood of the festival booth since sanctity did fall upon it it becomes muksa for the entire seven days but in what respect is this different from what was stated if one set aside seven etrogim for the seven days of the festival rap says after fulfilling his obligation with each one of them they may be eaten immediately and rc says after fulfilling his obligation with each one of them they may be eaten on the morrow there where the nights are separated from the days each day is a separate obligation but here where the nights are not separated from the days all the seven days are regarded as one long day talmud moss bites omission one may bring in from the field fire dashwood that is gathered together and from a carpet of an enclosure even though it is scattered about what is a carp of any enclosure adjoining the town this is the opinion of our judah jose says any enclosure which one enters with a key even if it is only just within a Sabbath Tihum Gemara Rab Judah said in Samuel's name you may take wood only from a collected pile in an enclosure but we have learned from an enclosure even though it is scattered about our mission represents the opinion of an individual for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel do not differ both agreeing that one may not take in wood that was scattered in the field and that one may take in wood that was piled up in an enclosure they differ only with respect to scattered wood in an enclosure and collected wood in a field when Beth Shammai say he may not take thereof and Beth Hillel say he may take thereof said Rabba leaves of shrubs and leaves of the bunch shoots even though they lie in a heap are forbidden for since if a wind rises it scatters them they are regarded as if they are scattered but if he laid a garment over them the previous day it is well what is a carpet etc. Scholars ask what does it mean does it mean any enclosure adjoining the town providing however it has a way of entering by a key whereas our Jose comes to teach since it has a way of entering by a key even if only just within a Sabbath it is still a carpet for this is perhaps what it means any enclosure adjoining the town whether it has a way of entering by a key or not and our Jose comes to teach even if only just within a Sabbath it is a carpet but only if it has a way of entering by a key if however it has no way of entering by a key it is not a carpet even though the enclosure adjoins the town come and here since it the mission teaches our Jose says any enclosure which one enters with a key even if only just within a Sabbath understand therefom that our Jose teaches a twofold leniency our said in the name of Jeremiah the Holochai says our Jose in the direction of leniency mission one may not chop up firewood from beams nor from a beam which was broken on a festival and one may not chop either with an axe or with a saw or with a sickle but only with a butcher's chopper Gemara Talmud, Moss bites a bee but you say in the first clause one may not chop up wood at all answered Rav Judah in the name of Samuel there is a lacuna and must be taught thus one may not chop up firewood from a layer of beams nor from a beam which was broken on a festival but one may chop up firewood from a beam which was broken before the festival end. When one chops up one may not chop either with an axe or with a saw or with a sickle but only with a butcher's chopper we have likewise learned one may not chop up firewood from a layer of beams nor from a beam which was broken on a festival because it was not mukin but not with an axe or high and a bee salmia said in Rav's name they taught this only of its broad end but with its narrow end it is permitted this is obvious we have learned but only with a butcher's chopper you might say this. Applies to a chopper only, but as for a combined axe and chopper, I might say since the side is forbidden, the other side too is forbidden. So he informs us that it is not so. Some teach this with respect to the latter clause, but only with a butcher's chopper. Our high and be Salmia said in Rab's name, they taught this only of its narrow end, but with its broad end, it is prohibited. This is obvious. We have learned one may not chop with an axe. You might say this applies only to an axe alone, but as for a combined chopper and axe, I might say since this end is permitted, the other end too is permitted. So he informs us that it is not so. Mission: If a closed room full of produce was burst open on a festival, he may take the produce out through the breach. Our mayor says he may make a hole at the outset and bring out the produce tomorrow. Why? So he is indeed pulling down a tent. Said our Naomi Biata in the name of Samuel, it treats here of a layer of bricks, but it is not so for our Naman said bricks. Left over from a building may be moved on Sabbath because they are fit for sitting on but if he put them in layers one upon the other he has certainly determined them for something else said our Zara they said this with respect to a festival but not with respect to Sabbath we have likewise learned our mayor says he may make a hole at the outset and take out they said this with respect to a festival but not with respect to Sabbath Samuel said one may loosen the knots in the ground but one may not unravel nor cut the rope the knots in the doors of utensils one may loosen and unravel and cut whether on a Sabbath or a festival they raised an objection one may loosen the knots in the ground on the Sabbath but one may not unravel nor cut but on a festival one may loosen and unravel and cut this represents the view of our mayor who says he may make a hole at the outset and bring out the produce but the rabbis dispute with him and I say this according to the rabbis do then the rabbis Dispute with him with respect to knots in the ground. Surely it was taught the sages agree with our mayor with respect to knots in the ground that on Sabbath one may loosen, but one may not unravel nor cut while on a festival one may loosen and unravel and cut Talmud. Moss Baita he ruled as the following tenet for it was taught one may loosen the knots in the ground, but one may not unravel nor cut whether on a Sabbath or on a festival. But as to those of utensils on a Sabbath one may loosen, but one may not unravel nor cut on a festival one may loosen and unravel and cut. You have justified the first clause, but there is a contradiction from the concluding clause. This represents the opinion of Arniyamai who says all utensils may not be handled except for their normal use. If it is Arniyamai, why particularly the Sabbath? The same holds good even on a festival. And if you say that Arniyamai makes a distinction between a Shabbat of the Sabbath and a Shabbat of a festival, I would object. Does he then make a distinction for one berry that teaches one may kindle a fire on a festival with utensils but one may not kindle a fire with fragments of utensils and another berry that teaches one may kindle a fire with both utensils and fragments of utensils and still another berry that teaches one may not kindle either with utensils or with broken pieces of utensils and we explain there is no contradiction one is according to our Judah the other is according to our Simeon and the third is according to our Nehemiah two tanaim dispute about the opinion of our Nehemiah Mishnah one may not hollow out a lamp on a festival because he would be making a utensil and one may not make charcoal on a festival nor cut a wick into our Judah says one may separate with a flame tomorrow who teaches that the hollowing out of a lamp constitutes making a utensil said our Joseph it is our mayor for it was taught when is a clay vessel susceptible to defilement as soon as its form is finished this is the opinion of our mayor our Joshua says as soon as it is baked in the furnace said
Wiccan 2 etc. Why not with a knife Talmud? Moss bites a bee because either by makes an article than by severing it with fire he is also making an article or high taught he may sever it with fire when the wick is in two lamps set our Nathan B. Abba in the name of Rab 1 may trim the wick on a festival what is meant by trimming set our Hannah B. Salmia in Rab's name to remove the snuff bark of taught six things have been taught with respect to a wick three restrictions and three. Leniencies the restrictions are one may not plate it at the outset on a festival and one may not singe it with fire and one may not cut it into leniencies one may rub it by hand and one may soak it in oil and one may sever it with fire when it is in two lamps our Nathan B. Abba further said in the name of Rab the rich man of Babylon will go down to Gehenna for once Shabtai B. Marinus came to Babylon and entreated them to provide him with facilities for trading and they refused this to him. Neither did they give him any food he said these are the descendants of the mixed multitude for it is written and he will show thee mercy and have compassion upon thee teaching that whoever is merciful to his fellow men is certainly of the children of our father Abraham and whosoever is not merciful to his fellow men is certainly not of the children of our father Abraham our Nathan B. Abba further said in the name of Rab he who is dependent on another's table the world is dark to him for it is. Said he wandereth abroad for bread where is it he knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand our Hista says also his life is no life our rabbis taught there are three whose life is no life and they are he who is dependent on the table of his neighbor he whom his wife rules and he whose body is subject to suffering and some say also he who possesses only one shirt and the first tana it is possible to examine his garment mission one may not break up the pot's hurt or cut paper in order to Roast thereon salt fish nor may one rake out an oven or a pot range but one may press the ashes down nor may one place two jars side by side in order to set a saucepan on them nor may one prop up a pot with a wooden wedge and the same applies to a door nor may one drive cattle with a staff on a festival but our Eliezer son of our Simeon permits it tomorrow what is the reason that one may not break up a pot's herd because he is making a new article nor may one rake out an oven or a pot range are high be Joseph recited in the presence of our nomin if it is impossible to bake unless it is raked out it is permitted a brick fell down in our highest wife's oven on a festival so our highest said to her take notice that I want good bread Robin said to his attendant roasted duck for me and mind it does not get burnt Robin said to our Ashi Araha from Husel told that they pasted up the oven for you sir on a festival he replied to him we use the clay from the bank of the Euphrates and even then only. When one had marked out the clay on the previous day said rub and ashes are permitted nor may one place two jars side by side said Arnaman it is permissible to arrange the stones of a privy side by side on a festival rabba raised an objection to Arnaman one may not place two jars side by side and on the set a saucepan he replied to him it is different therefore he is making a tent rabba said to our ashi accordingly it should also be permitted to build a seat on a festival since he is not making a tent he replied to him there the Torah forbade a permanent building but not a temporary building but the rabbis forbade a temporary building on account of a permanent building but here the rabbis did not enact this prohibition for the sake of his dignity rab judah said it is permitted to build a fire heat from above downwards but not from beneath upwards talmud moss bites are the same is true also of an egg a pot of bed and a jug nor may one prop up the pot with a wooden wedge and Likewise with a door can you possibly mean with a door say rather and the same applies to a door our rabbis taught one may not prop up the pot with a wooden wedge and the same applies to a door for wood is meant as a rule only for heating but our Simeon permits it nor may one drive cattle with a staff on a festival but our Eliezer son of our Simeon permits it shall it be said that our Eliezer son of our Simeon agrees with his father in rejecting the prohibition of books and no in this case even our Simeon agrees for it looks as though he were going to market bamboo cane our nomin forbids and our she's hate permits when it is moist none dispute that it is forbidden they only dispute when it is dry he who forbids it says what is made to serve only for kindling he who permits it says it is one and the same thing whether roasting with it used as a spit or whether roasting with its coal some say when it is dry none dispute that it is permitted they only dispute when it is moist he who forbids it. It is because it is not fit for fuel and he who permits it says it is fit for a big fire and the law is when it is dry it is permitted when it is moist it is forbidden Rabba lectured a woman may not go into a woodshed to fetch there from a brand and a log of wood that was broken on a festival may not be burnt on a festival for one may heat with utensils but one may not heat with broken utensils shall it be said that Rabba is of the same opinion as our Judah who holds the rule of Muxa but surely Rabba said to his attendant roast me a duck and throw its inwards to the cat there it is different since that the inwards turn putrid he had intended them for the cat from the day before Mishnah our Eliezer says a man may take a chip from that which is lying before him to pick his teeth with it and he may collect chips from the courtyard and make a fire for everything in a court is Mukin but the sages say he may collect only from that which is before him and make a fire one may not produce fire either from wood or from stones or from earth or from tiles or from water nor may one make tiles red hot in order to roast on them. Gemara Rab Judah said Talmud, Moss bites to be the prohibition of making a utensil does not apply to cattle fodder. Our Kahana raised an objection to Rab Judah one may carry about spice wood for smelling or in order to fan a sick person with it and he may rub it and smell it but he may not cut off a piece in order to smell it and if he did cut off a piece he is not culpable although it is forbidden he may not cut off a piece in order to pick his teeth but if he did cut off he is liable to a sin offering he replied to him if the Beritha had taught that he is not culpable yet it is forbidden even that would contradict me how much more so when it states he is liable for a sin offering but that Beritha was taught with respect to hard spice wood but his hard spice wood capable of being rubbed there is a lacuna and must be taught as Follows he may rub it and smell it and he may cut off a piece and smell it this only applies to soft spice wood but he may not cut hard spice wood and if he does cut it he is not culpable although it is forbidden he may not cut off a piece in order to pick his teeth but if he does cut off he is liable to a sin offering one berry that teaches he may cut off a piece and smell it and another berry that teaches he may not cut off in order to smell their upset arzera in the name of arhista. There is no contradiction one refers to soft spice wood the other to hard to this arahabi Jacob demurred why may he not cut off from hard spice wood in what respect is this different from what we learned a man may break open a cask in order to eat of its dry fix provided that he does not intend to make a utensil of it and furthermore Rabbi son of Arata and Rabin son of Arata have both related when we were staying with Rab Judah he broke a branch off and gave us each a piece of aloe. Would although they were so hard that they were capable of being used as a handle for a bill or an axe, there is no contradiction. The one is according to our Eliezer and the other is according to the rabbis. For it was taught our Eliezer says a man may take a chip from wood lying before him to pick his teeth with it, but the sages say he may take it only out of a cattle crib. But they both agree that he may not cut off a piece, and if he did cut off to pick his teeth or to open a door with it, if he did it unwittingly on a Sabbath, he is liable to a sin offering, and if he did it deliberately on a festival, he is liable to receive forty lashes. This is the opinion of our Eliezer, but the sages say both the one and the other are forbidden only as a Shabbat. Now our Eliezer who says there he is liable to a sin offering will hold here that he is not culpable, although it is forbidden. The rabbis who say there he is not culpable, although it is forbidden, maintain here that it is permitted. At the outset, but does not our Eliezer accept the teaching a man may break open a cask in order to eat of its dry fix, provided that he does not intend to make a utensil set our ashi that was taught with respect to a barrel whose parts are stuck together with pitch and he may collect from the court our rabbis taught he may collect from the court and make a fire for everything in the court is mukin provided that he does not make many heaps but our simian permits even this in what do they differ one is of the opinion it looks as though he were gathering for the morrow and the day after and the other is of the opinion his pot bears testimony for him one may not produce fire what is the reason because he is creating something new on a festival nor may one make tiles red hot what does he do said rabbi barhana in the name of our yohanan we are dealing here with new bricks and the prohibition is because talmud moss bites he has yet to examine them others explain it because he has Yet to harden them we have learned elsewhere if one tr
A new pot range are like all other utensils which may be carried about in a court but one may not smear them with oil or polish them with a rug or cool them with cold water in order to harden them but if it is done for the purpose of baking it is permitted our rabbis taught one may scald the head and the feet of a fowl or animal or singe them with fire but one may not cover them with potter's clay or with earth or with lime nor may one cut off their hair with scissors and one may not cut round vegetables with their garden shears but one may trim the artichoke and the garden one may heat and bake in a large oven and one may warm up water in an antique vessel but one may not bake in a new large oven lest it crack our rabbis taught one may not blow up the fire with bellows on a festival but one may blow it up with a two breed one may not condition a spit nor may one sharpen it our rabbis taught one may not split a reed in order to roast a salt fish thereon but one may Crack a nut in a rag and we do not apprehend lest it be torn mission our Eliezer further said a man may stand near his drying fixed Talmud, moss bites a bee on the eve of a Sabbath in the sabbatical year and say from this part will I eat tomorrow but the sages say only if he marks it out and says from here unto there tomorrow we have learned elsewhere if children put away fix in the field on the eve of Sabbath for the Sabbath and they forgot and did not tithe them before the Sabbath they may not be eaten after the Sabbath until they have been tithed and we have also learned if one was carrying fix through his court for drying his children and the members of his household may make a light meal of them and are exempt from tithes Rabbah asked Arnaman does the Sabbath establish a liability to tithes in the case of drying fix seeing that they were not completely ready for eating do we say since it is written and thou shalt call the Sabbath a delight the Sabbath establishes a Liability even where the commodity is not completely ready for tithing or perhaps if the Sabbath establishes liability only where the commodity is completely ready for tithing but not where the commodity is not yet completely ready he replied to him the Sabbath establishes liability whether the commodity is completely ready for tithing or not he said to him say perhaps that the Sabbath is like a court just as a court establishes liability only where the commodity is completely ready for tithing so also the Sabbath does not establish liability save where the commodity is completely ready he replied to him we have a distinct teaching that the Sabbath establishes liability both where the commodity is completely ready and where the commodity is not completely ready for tithing Marzitra son of Arnam and said we have likewise learned our Eliezer further said a man may stand near his drying fix on the eve of the Sabbath in the sabbatical year etc thus it is only in the sabbatical Year when it is free from tithe, but in the other years of the septenate it would be forbidden. And for what reason is it not because the Sabbath establishes liability? No, there it is different since he says from this part will I eat tomorrow. He established liability for himself. If so, why particularly the Sabbath this holds good even on a weekday? This is what he informs us, namely that tibble is regarded as Mukin Talmud, Moss by with respect to Sabbath, so that if one transgressed and tithe that it is fit for use, but is not the remainder put back, and we know our Eliza to hold that whenever the remainder can be put back, it does not establish liability. For we have learned if one took olives out of the vat, he may dip them in salt one at a time and eat them untithed, but if he dipped ten in salt and placed them before him, he is liable. Our Eliza says if he takes them from a clean vat, he is liable from an unclean vat, he is exempt because he can put back what remains over and we Argued on this what is the difference between the first clause and the last clause and Arabao answered the first clause treats of a clean vat and an unclean person so that he cannot put the remainder back the last clause treats of an unclean vat and an unclean person so that he can put it back our mission two treats of clean drying fix and an unclean person who cannot put it back but surely they are de facto put back rather said Arsami B. Ashi you speak of our Eliza our Eliza follows his opinion expressed elsewhere for he says that separating Terima establishes liability how much more so the Sabbath for we have learned if Terima had been separated from fruits before they were completely ready for tithing our Eliza forbids a light meal to be made of it but the sages permit come and hear a support from the second clause but the sages say only if he marks it out and says from here unto there thus it is only on the eve of a Sabbath in the sabbatical year when it is free. From tithe, but in other years of the septenate it would be forbidden. What is the reason? Surely because the Sabbath establishes liability. No, there it is different since he says from here unto there will I eat tomorrow. He made it liable for tithing. If so, why particularly of Sabbath this holds good even on a weekday? This is what he informs us, namely that Tebal is mukin with respect to Sabbath, so that if one transgressed and separated the tithe, it is fit for use, but the following contradicts. This if one was eating a cluster of grapes and entered from the garden into the court, our Eliza says he may finish eating it without tithing, but our Joshua maintains he may not finish if it was getting dark towards the Sabbath. Our Eliza says he may finish eating the cluster of grapes, but our Joshua maintains he may not finish there. It is different as the passage is explained. Our Nathan says when our Eliza said he may finish, he did not mean that he may finish eating it in the court, but he must leave the court and finish it in his garden. And when our Eliza said he may finish, he did not mean that he may finish it on the Sabbath, but he waits until the termination of the Sabbath and finishes it. When Rabin came from Palestine, he said in the name of our Yohanan, neither the Sabbath nor the separating of Teremon nor bringing the fruit into the court nor the act of purchasing established liability save where it was otherwise completely ready for tithing the Sabbath to reject the opinion of Hillel, for it was taught if one carries fruit from one place to another and the holiness of the Sabbath day came upon him, said our Judah Hillel alone forbids a Talmud, Moss bites of court to reject the opinion of our Jacob, for we have learned if one was carrying fix into his court for drying his children and the members of his household may eat of them a light meal and are exempt from tithes. And with respect to this, it was taught our Jacob makes him liable for tithing. And our Jose son of our Judah exempts him Terima to reject the opinion of our Eliza for we have learned if one separated Terima from fruits before they were completely ready for tithing our Eliza forbids a light meal to be made of it but the sages permit purchasing as it was taught if one bought fix from an Amhires in a district where the majority of the people press them he may eat thereof a light meal and he tithes them as he may infer from this three things infer from this that purchasing establishes liability only where it was completely ready for tithing infer from this also that the majority of the Amhires do tithe their produce and further infer from this that one should tithe the demo of an Amhires even of a commodity whose preparation has not yet been completed and it is to reject that which we have learned if one exchanges fruit with his neighbor the one intending to eat them as they are and the other intending to eat them or the one Intending to drive them and the other intending to drive them or the one intending to eat them and the other intending to drive them they are both liable our Judah says he who intends eating it is liable but he who intends drying it is exempt chapterv mission one may let down fruit through a trapdoor on a festival but not on a sabbath and cover up fruit with vessels on account of the rain and likewise jars of wine and jars of oil and even on a sabbath one may place a vessel beneath the drops of rain Gamar it was stated Rab Judah and our Nathan dispute one recites Mashalin and the other teaches Mashalin said Marzitra the one that recites Mashalin does not teach wrongly and the other who recites Mashalin does not teach wrongly the one that recites Mashalin does not teach wrongly for it is written for thine olives shall drop off Yishal and the other who recites Mashalin does not teach wrongly for we have learned if the first ling is Ashahal or Kasal it may be Slaughtered Chahal means an animal whose hip has become dislocated and Kasal means an animal one of whose hips is higher than the other Arnaman B. Isaac said the one that recites Masharin does not teach wrongly and the one that recites Mashharin does not teach wrongly and the one that recites Mashirin does not teach wrongly the one that recites Mashirin does not teach wrongly for we have learned our Ishmael says a Nazi right may not shampoo his head with clay because it makes the hair fall out. Mashir and the one that recites Mashharin does not teach wrongly for we have learned the hair clip shot and the barber scissors are susceptible to defilement even though they the two parts are separated and the one that recites Mashirin does not teach wrongly for we have learned if one's clothes fell Nashru in the water on a Sabbath he may walk in them without fear alternatively from the following teaching what is like it that which was let fall Nashir at the time of harvesting we have learned you may let down fruit through a trapdoor on a festival how much said our in the name of RC some say RC said in the name of our Yohanan like that which we have learned one may clear away on Sab
Furthermore, we have learned here one may let down fruit through a trapdoor on a festival, and our Naman said they taught this only with respect to the same roof, but not from one roof to another, and it was likewise taught one may not move things from one roof to another even when the roofs are level with each other. Now, how is it there on the Sabbath? Do I say that here only it is forbidden because a festival is less stringent and people might come to treat it lightly, but on a Sabbath which is stringent and people will not come to treat it lightly, it is allowed, or perhaps I can argue if here where loss of fruit is involved, you say that it is not permitted there where no damage of fruit is involved. How much the more again it was taught here he may not let them the bundles down through windows with ropes, nor may he bring them down by means of ladders. How is it there? Do I say that only here on a festival it is forbidden because no disturbance of study is involved, but there on the Sabbath where there is a disturbance of study it is allowed or perhaps I can argue if here where damage of fruit is involved you say that it is forbidden there where no damage of fruit is involved how much the more the questions remain undecided and one may cover up fruit Allah said even a stack of loose bricks our Isaac said only fruits which are usable may be covered and our Isaac follows his opinion expressed elsewhere for our Isaac said a utensil may be handled on Sabbath only for the benefit of a thing which itself may be handled on the Sabbath we have learned one may cover up fruit with vessels only fruit but not a stack of loose bricks the same is true even of a stack of loose bricks but because he teaches in the first part of the Mishnah one may let down fruit he teaches also in the concluding part one may cover up fruit we have learned and likewise jars of wine and jars of oil we are dealing here with people this too is logical for if you maintain that we are dealing with jars of wine and oil which are permitted surely this he already teaches in the first clause of his fruits it is especially necessary to teach this with respect to jars of wine and oil for I might have thought that the rabbis took into consideration only a great loss but a small loss they did not take into consideration so he informs us that it is not so we have learned on a sabbath you may place a vessel beneath the drops of rain it deals here with respect to rain fit for use come and here one may spread a mat over bricks on a sabbath it treats of bricks that were left over from a building and which are fit to sit on come and here you may spread a mat over stones on a sabbath it treats of smoothly pointed stones which are fit for a privy come and here one may spread a mat over a beehive on a sabbath in sunny weather on account of the sun and in rainy weather on account of the rain provided that he does not intend to capture the bees there likewise it Treats of a case where it contains honey are up by mission said to our ashi this is well in summer when there is honey in the hive but in winter how is it to be explained it is especially necessary to teach this with respect to the two honeycombs but these two honeycombs are muxa we deal here with a case where he reserved them for his use but what if he did not reserve them for his use it is forbidden then instead of teaching provided that he does not intend to capture the bees he should teach a distinction with respect to the first case itself is this applies only when he has reserved them for his use but if he did not reserve them for his use it is forbidden this is what he means to say even though he has reserved them for his use he may cover them with a mat provided always that he does not intend to capture the bees how have you explained it according to our Judah who holds the law of muxa but say the concluding part provided that he does not intend to Capture the beast. This is in accordance with our Simeon who says an unintentional act is permitted. Do you then think the concluding clause is according to our Simeon? Surely Abay and Rabba both said our Simeon agrees that it is forbidden in the case of cut off his head, but let him not die. In point of fact, the whole mission there is according to our Judah, and we are dealing here with a case where the beehive has a little window, and do not say AC according to our Judah, provided that he does not intend to capture the beast. Talmud, Moss bites a bee, but say rather provided that he does not make it the beehive a trap. But this is obvious. You might say that catching is forbidden only in respect of the kind of creature which one usually catches, but with respect to the sort which one does not usually catch, it is permitted. So he informs us that it is not so. Our Ashi says, does he then teach in summer and in winter? He teaches in sunny weather on account of the sun and in rainy weather on. Account of the rain, i.e., in the days of Nissan and in the days of Tishri, when there is both sun and rain as well as honey present on Sabbath, one may place a vessel beneath the drops of rain. It was taught if the vessel became full, he may keep on pouring it out as it fills and put it back again without restraint. In the mill room of Abbe, rain trickled through. He came before Rabbi, who said to him, Go bring in your bed there so that the mill may be regarded by you like a commode, and so take it out. Abbe sat and put himself the question made, and one make of anything a commode at the outset. In the meantime, Abbe's mill fell to pieces. He said, I well deserve it, for I have transgressed the words of my master Samuel. Said the commode, and the chamber pot may be taken out to the dung heap for emptying, and when he brings them back, he is to pour water therein and then take them back from this. The disciples concluded that one may carry out the contents of the commode by means of the vessel but not the orger itself but come and here to the contrary once a mouse was found in a scent box belonging to our ashi our ashi said to them take it by the tail and bring it out mission every act that is culpable on a sabbath as a shabbat or an optional act reshut or a religious act is also culpable on a festival the following acts are culpable as a shabbat one may not climb a tree nor ride a beast nor swim in water nor clap the hands nor slap the thighs nor dance the following are culpable as optional secular acts one may not judge nor betroth the wife nor perform halizan nor perform yibum consume a levi marriage the following are culpable as religious acts one may not dedicate anything to the temple nor vow a personal valuation nor make a vow of Urim, nor set aside terima or tithes all these things that the rabbis prescribed as culpable on a festival how much more are they culpable on sabbath the festival differs from the sabbath only in Respect of the preparation of food alone tomorrow one may not climb a tree it is a preventive measure lest he pluck fruit nor ride a beast it is a preventive measure lest he might go without the tihum then this proves that the law of tihum is biblical rather say it is a preventive measure lest he cut off a switch nor swim in water it is a preventive measure lest he might make a swimming bladder nor clap the hands nor slap the thighs nor dance it is a preventive measure lest he might repair musical instruments the following are culpable as optional secular acts one may not judge but is he not discharging a religious act this holds good only where a more capable person is available nor betroth the wife is he not discharging a religious obligation it treats of one Talmud, Mos Baita, who already has a wife and children nor perform halizan nor perform yibum is he not performing a religious act it treats of a case where there is an elder brother and it is a prior obligation for the elder brother to consummate a Levi rate marriage and on account of what are all these forbidden it is a preventive measure lest he write the following are culpable as religious acts one may not dedicate nor vow a personal valuation nor make a vow of her and they are forbidden as preventive measures lest one transact business nor set aside terima or tithes this is obvious our Joseph taught it is necessary to teach this even in the case of giving them to the priest on the same day of the festival this however applies only to produce which was tebal since the day before but with respect to produce which is only just now become tebal as for example to set aside halal from dough he may set them tithes aside and give them to the priest are then these acts culpable only as rishat and not as shabbat and are those acts culpable only as religious acts and not as shabbat said our Isaac he proceeds to a climax not only is an act which is purely a shabbat forbidden but even a Shabbat which partakes of an optional meritorious act is also forbidden and not only is a Shabbat partaking of an optional meritorious act forbidden but even a Shabbat partaking of a religious obligation is also forbidden all these things they forbade on a festival etc but the following contradicts this one may let down fruit through a trap door on a festival but not on a Sabbath said our Joseph there is no contradiction the one is according to our Eliezer the other is according to our Joshua for it was taught if an animal and its young fell into a pit our Eliezer says he may bring up one of them in order to slaughter it and must slaughter it and as for the other he feeds it in the very place it fell so that it should not die our Joshua says he brings up one in order to slaughter it but does not slaughter it and he uses subtlety and again brings up the second animal and he may slaughter whichever he desires Abbe said to him once do you know that it is so perhaps our Eliezer Said so only there where one can feed the animal but not here where no feeding is possible or perhaps our Joshua ruled thus only there where one can make use of subtlety but not here where it is not possible to make use of subtlety rather said our papa there is no contradiction the one is according to Beth Shammai the other is
Arjuna exempts in the case of water because it is not substantial. Gemara our Mishnah Talmud, Mas bites a bee is not as Ardosa for it was taught. Ardosa says some say Abbasal says if one buys a beast from his neighbor on the eve of the festival even though he did not deliver it to him until the festival it is restricted to the same limits as the feet of the purchaser and if one handed over a beast to a herdsman even though he did not deliver it to him until the festival it is restricted to. The same limits as the feet of the herdsman you can even say it is as Ardosa and there is no contradiction here it treats of one herdsman and there of two herdsmen this call also be proved for it teaches to his son unto a herdsman infer from this that it is so Rabbi Barhana said in the name of Aryohanan the Halachagas as Ardosa did then Aryohanan say thus but surely Aryohanan has said the Halachagas as an anonymous mission and we have learned cattle and utensils are as the feet of it. Owners etc. have we not already explained here it treats of one herdsman and there of two herdsmen are rabbis taught if two people borrowed one garment jointly one to wear it in the morning at the academy and the other to wear it in the evening at a banquet the one setting an Arab on the north side of the town and the other on the south side and the one who set the Arab on the north side may walk in it to the north side only as far as the other who set his Arab on the south side is allowed to go and the one who set the Arab on the south may wear it to the south only as far as the other who set the Arab on the north may go and if they measured the Sabbath limit exactly then if the garment may not be moved from its place it was stated if two men bought a barrel and an animal in partnership Rab says the barrel is permitted but the animal is forbidden Samuel however says the barrel too is forbidden what is Rab's opinion if he holds that selection is retrospective then the animal too should be permitted and if he holds that selection is not retrospective then the barrel too should be forbidden in reality he holds that selection is retrospective but the case of an animal is different because the territories draw their vitality from one another Arkahana and RSC said to Rabbi the partners do not take into account the prohibition of Muksa but they do take into account the prohibition of boundary limits Rab was silent how does the law stand Arashi says Selection is retrospective and Aryohanan maintains selection is not retrospective does then Arashi hold the law of Barabah but surely we have learned if a corpse lay in a room which has many doors they are all unclean if one of these doors was opened it alone is unclean and all the others are clean if he formed the intention to take it the corpse out through one of them or through a window which measures four handbreadths square this gives protection to all the other doors Beth Shammai. Say providing that he had formed his intention to take it out before the person died but Beth Hillel say it holds good even if his intention was formed after the person died and it was stated thereon Arashi said the statement of Beth Hillel is with respect to the cleansing of the doors from now and onwards only from now and onwards but not retrospectively reverse the authorities Arashi says selection is not retrospective and Aryohanan maintains selection is retrospective does then. Aryohanan hold that selection is retrospective surely RC said in the name of Aryohanan brothers who have divided an inheritance are considered as purchasers and must restore their shares to one another in the year of jubilee and if you answer that Aryohanan does not hold that selection is retrospective in the case of a biblical law but with respect to a rabbinical law he does hold I would object does he then hold in the case of a rabbinical law but I taught Arjuna says a man cannot conditionally reserve for himself two contingencies simultaneously but if a scholar comes to the east his Arab to the east is valid if to the west his Arab to the west is valid however he cannot stipulate when there are two scholars coming on different sides Talmud, Moss bites A and we raise the question why is it that he cannot stipulate when there are two scholars coming on different sides because we do not hold that selection is retrospective then even if a scholar came to the east or to the west we should likewise not maintain that selection is retrospective and Aryohanan answered it treats of a case where the scholar had already come consequently we see that Aryohanan does not hold that selection is retrospective but in reality do not reverse the authorities but Arashi does not hold that selection is retrospective only in respect of a biblical law but in respect to a rabbinical law he does hold it Marzitra lectured the Halachagas as Arashi. Samuel said the ox of a cattle breeder is as the feet of all the ox of a herdsman is as the feet of the people of that town if one borrows a vessel from his neighbor on the eve of the festival etc this is obvious this is necessary respecting the case when it was not delivered to him until the festival you might think that he the owner did not place it in his the borrower's possession so he informs us that it is not so this supports Aryohanan for Aryohanan said if one borrows a Vessel from his neighbor on the eve of the festival, even though he did not hand it over to him until the festival, it is as the feet of the borrower, but on the festival, it is as the feet of the lender. This is obvious, this is necessary, respecting the case when he is wont to borrow frequently from him. You might think that he tacitly puts it into his the borrower's possession, so he informs us that it is not so, for he, the owner, might say he will probably find another person and go and borrow. From him, likewise, a woman that borrowed from her neighbor when our Abba went up to Palestine, he said, May it be the will of God that I may say something which is acceptable when he came up to Palestine. He met our Yohanan and our Hannah be Papi and our Zara, some say our Abba and our Simeon be Pazi and our Isaac the Smith, and they were sitting and saying, Why so let the water and the salt be nullified in relation to the dough? Our Abba said to them, Talmud, Moss bites a bee if one cab of wheat of one person. Got mixed up with ten cabs of wheat of another should the latter eat and be happy they laughed at him said he to them have I taken away your coats that you laugh at me they again laughed at him said Arashi they were right in laughing at him why did he not say to them as an example of a case of wheat that got mixed up with barley because they are of different kinds and in a mixture of different kinds the rule of neutralization takes effect and the same is true of wheat that got mixed up with wheat granted that according to Arjuna it does not become neutralized but according to the rabbis it indeed becomes neutralized our Safra said to him by Moses is it well what you say did they not hear what our high of Tizaphone said in the name of Rab if one picks out pebbles from his neighbor's threshing floor he must pay him the value of wheat consequently it is because he lessened the measure of his wheat likewise in this case he has lessened the quantity said Abbe to him does not the master make a distinction between money which is being claimed and money which is not being claimed he replied to him and according to your opinion that which are his said nibla is neutralized in ritually slaughtered meat because the slaughtered cannot assume the character of nibla but ritually slaughtered meat is not neutralized in nibla because nibla can assume the character of ritually slaughtered meat would you likewise assume that if it has an owner it does not become neutralized and if you say it is even so surely it was taught are you had and said ownerless articles acquire their sabbath rest although they had no owner it is the same as if they had an owner he replied to him still can you compare the case of a ritual prohibition with a monetary case in the case of a ritual prohibition it the less is neutralized in the majority but with respect to a monetary case it is not neutralized in the majority what is now the reason Abbe says it is a Preventive measure lest the dough be made in partnership. Rabbi says condiments are used for seasoning and whatever is used for seasoning does not become neutralized. Talmud, Moss bites A and Arashi says because it is an object which can become otherwise permitted and any object which can become otherwise permitted is not neutralized even in 2000 times its quantity. Arjuna exempts in the case of water only water and not the salt but surely it was taught Arjuna says water and salt become neutralized both in dough as well as in cooked food. There is no difficulty the one treats of salt of Sodom and the other of salt of Israel but it was taught Arjuna says water and salt become neutralized in dough but do not become neutralized in cooked food because of its fluidity. There is no difficulty the one treats of a thick mass the other of clear soup mission. A live coal is restricted to the same limits as its owner but a flame can be taken anywhere one incurs a trespass. Offering in respect of a live coal of hippish, but as for a flame of hippish, one may neither benefit from it nor incur a trespass. Offering if one carries out a live coal into public ground on a Sabbath, he is culpable, but if he does the same with a flame, he is exempt. Gemara, our rabbis taught five things were said in respect to a live coal. A live coal is restricted to the same limits as its owner, but a flame can be taken anywhere one incurs a trespass. Offering in respect to a live coal of hippish, but with respect to a flame, one may not benefit from it nor incur a trespass. Offering a live coal used in idolatry service is forbidden, but a flame is permitted. If one carries out a live coal into public ground on a Sabbath, he is
Standard required for we have learned he is culpable that takes out a pot's herd big enough to place between one board and another. This is the opinion of Arjuna, but that which we have learned if one carries out a flame on a Sabbath, he is exempt. How can it occur if, for example, he brandishes the object that is burning so that the flame projected into public ground mission of the water from a private well is restricted to the same limits as its owner and the water from a well belonging to? The inhabitants of that town is restricted to the same limits as the people of that town and the water from a well belonging to those who return from Babylon is restricted to the same limits as the one that Draskamara Rabba pointed out a contradiction to our nom and we have learned the water from a private well is restricted to the same limits as its owner but the following contradicts this flowing streams and bubbling springs have the same restrictions as anyone answered Rabba R. Mishnah treats of collected water it was likewise stated our high Avin said in the name of Samuel it treats of collected water and the water from a well belonging to those who return from Babylon is as the one that draws it was stated if one draws water and gives it to his neighbor our nom and says it is restricted to the same limits as the one for whom it was drawn but our she's hate maintains as the one who drew in what are they disputing one is of the opinion that the well is Ownerless while the other is of the opinion that the well is held jointly robber raised the following objection to our nom and if one says to his neighbor behold I am her unto you he against whom the vow is made is forbidden Talmud, Moss by Tzabi if he said behold thou art her unto thee the vow is forbidden if he said behold I am her unto thee and thou to me both are forbidden to benefit from one another but to both is permitted the use of things that belong to them that came up from Babylon but the use of things that belong to the citizens of that town is forbidden to both and the following are the things which belong to them that came up from Babylon the temple mount the temple chambers the temple courts and the well in the middle of the road the following belong to the citizens of that town the market square the synagogue and the bathhouse now if you say that a well is held jointly then why is it permitted surely we have learned partners who vowed not to derive Benefit from one another may not enter their common courtyard to bathe in the well to bathe in it is indeed not allowed but we are treating here of drawing water the one draws of his own and the other draws of his own does then our nomin hold the rule of Barabah but we have learned brothers who are also partners when they are liable to surcharge they are exempt from cattle tithe and when they are liable to cattle tithe they are exempt from the surcharge and in this connection are in. Said this was taught only in the case when they divided goats for lambs and lambs for goats but if they divided goats for goats and lambs for lambs we say each receives his share which was designated for him at the very beginning while our nomin said even if they divided goats for goats and lambs for lambs we do not say each receives his share which was designated for him at the very beginning rather all agree that the well is ownerless but they dispute here with respect to the case of one who picks up a lost article on behalf of his neighbor one is of the opinion that he the neighbor acquires title to it and the other is of the opinion that he does not acquire admission if one has his produce in another town the inhabitants of which have made an Arab in order to bring to him some of his produce they may not bring it to him but if he himself made an Arab his produce is like himself Talmud, Moss Baita if one invited guests to his home they may not take away with them any portions unless he the host had assigned for them their portions on the eve of the festival tomorrow it was stated if one deposits produce with his neighbor Rab says the produce has the same restrictive limits as the one with whom they were deposited but Samuel says they have the same restrictive limits as the one who deposited them shall it be said that Rab and Samuel follow their opinions expressed elsewhere for we have learned if he brought in with permission the owner of the court Yard is liable. Rabbi says he is liable only when the owner has undertaken to guard it. And Arhuna said in Rab's name the halachah is according to the opinion of the sages. Whereas Samuel said the halachah is as Rabbi shall it be said that Rab is of the opinion of the rabbis and Samuel is of the opinion of Rabbi. Rab will say to you my opinion is even in accordance with Rabbi for Rabbi holds his opinion there because without an explicit declaration he does not undertake supervision. But here he definitely undertook to look after it. Also Samuel will reply to you my opinion is even in accordance with the rabbis for the rabbis hold their opinion there because a man wishes it that his ox should be in the possession of the owner of the court so that if it does damage he should not be liable. But here does a man then wish that his produce should be in the possession of his neighbor. We have learned. But if he himself made an error, his produce is like himself. Now if you say that the produce. Has the same restrictive limits as the one with whom it was deposited, even if he himself said an Arab of what avail is it to him or who replied in the academy. They declared that it treats of a case where he assigned a corner of his house to him. Come and here, if one invited guests to his home, they may not take away with them portions unless he had assigned for them their portions on the eve of the festival. Now, if you say that the produce has the same restrictive limits as the one with whom it was deposited, even if he assigned the portions for them through another person, of what avail is it here? Also, since he assigned the portions for them through another person, it is as if he assigned a corner of his house to them. Alternatively, say assignment is different. Our Hanabi Hanalai hung up meat on the door bolt. He came before Arhuna who said to him, If you yourself hung it up, go and take it away. But if they hung it up for you, you may not take it away. And even if he himself hung. It up may he then take it away surely Arhuna was a disciple of Rab and Rab said the produce has the same restrictive limits as the one with whom it was deposited it is different when he himself hung it up on the doorbell for it is as if he assigned for him a corner of the house Arhilal said to Arashi and if they hung it up for him may he not take it away surely Samuel said the ox of a cattle breeder is as the feet of anyone Rabbana said to Arashi and if they hung it up for him may he not take it away surely Rab the son of Arhana said in the name of Arhuna and the Halachah is as Ardosa Arashi said to Arkahana and if they hung it up for him may he not take it away surely we have learned cattle and utensils have the same restrictive limits as the feet of the owners rather it is different in the case of Arhana be for he was an important man and was deeply occupied in his study and he Arhuna said this to him if you yourself hung it up then you have an identification. Mark on it and you did not let it out of your mind therefore go and take it away but if they hung it up for you then you let it pass out of your mind and you may not take it away Mishnah one may not give drink and slaughter pasture animals but one may give drink and slaughter household animals the following are household animals they that pass the night in town pasture animals are such as pass the night in more distant pasture ground tomorrow why does he teach give drink and slaughter he incidentally informs us that a man should water his animal before slaughter on account of the adhesiveness of the skin our rabbis taught the following are pasture animals and the following are household animals pasture animals are such as are let out about the time of Passover and graze in more distant meadows and who are let in at the time of the first rainfall the following are household animals such as are let out and graze outside the city border but return and spend the night inside the city border rabbi says both of these are household animals but pasture animals are such as are let out and graze in more distant meadows and who do not return to the habitation of men either in summer or in winter does then rabbi accept the prohibition of muksesh surely our simeon be rabbi asked of rabbi what is the law according to our simeon with respect to dates which are set aside for rutting and he replied to him according to our simeon talmud moss bites of be only dry fix and raisins come under the category of muksa if you like say these also are like dry fix and raisins and if you like say he rabbi answered him according to the opinion of our simeon but he himself is not of this opinion alternatively say he rabbi said this according to the opinion of the rabbis according to my view there is absolutely no muksa but even on your view you should agree with me at all events that such animals as are let out and graze about the time of passover and who are let in at the time of the first rainfall are household animals and the rabbis replied to him no such are pasture animals.